Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Maker and today I'm teaching about Cricut Design Space for desktop and laptop with the most recent updates. This is the Cricut Kickoff Lesson 3 and we're going to go over the primary functions of the latest version of Cricut Design Space so you feel more comfortable in the software. And then we will create something fun together. So please pull up a chair in my studio or if you've been taking all of my Cricut Kickoff lessons, I have your chair saved for you. So let's get started. All right, in Cricut Kickoff Lesson 1, we downloaded and installed the free Cricut Design Space app from cricut.com slash setup. We created a Cricut ID or signed in with the one that we had. We did our test cut. In Cricut Kickoff Lesson 2, we went um, over all the tools, materials, supplies that you can use with your Cricut. If you need links to those videos to watch first, which I recommend, make sure you've watched those before tonight, before today's video, um, you can find them at cricutkickoff.com. Today, we'll dive into design space itself and see how it all works. Now, before we get too far, I want to remind you about my free and updated Cricut Kickoff Principal Handbook. Let me just show it to you as I tell you about it. Uh, the Cricut Kickoff Handbook goes along with all of these lessons. You can download it right now at cricutkickoff.com. Just register for the class, which is free, and you'll get the handbook. I'll be referring to it as we go along during today's lesson, but a little sneak peek is this awesome map that we made that has every single thing on the canvas marked. So if you, and also like little cheats about what things do, this is a great thing to just put near your computer as you're working and then if you can't quite remember where that thing was, uh, it's probably on this page. Also, our project, the step-by-step -step instructions are all in here. Tons of other stuff that's awesome in here, but those in particular, <laughs> I stuck it to my mat, are um, important and I just want to call your attention to them. Okay, so, <clears throat> forgive me, my voice is getting a little bit sore, so I will be drinking tea during today's class. <laughs> All right, so Cricut Design Space is the free companion app to your Cricut cutting machine. Design Space, or DS as some will call it, lets you design and cut with your Cricut. You can create projects from scratch, you can use one of Cricut's images, or upload your own images, or, you know, some other, some other ones, some other designers' images, like my images. And again, this is free software. So even if you don't currently have a Cricut, you can download this software free and play around with it first, which I highly recommend. So let's go ahead and to the Design Space app on my computer here so you can see what it looks like. Is that, is that it? There we go, it just took a minute. Uh, so here is Cricut Design Space. I have a um, multi-camera view for you and I am using my Mac. And so on one screen we've got, um, on the right we've got Cricut Design Space itself. You can see my cursor moving around there. And then we've also got a camera on the Cricut Maker 3, a camera on me, and a camera on my keyboard so you can see what I press, if that's helpful to you, all right? Now, I am using the Mac because that's what I do my live streams from, but the desktop, um, Design Space for Desktop looks the same on Mac and Windows with only one change and, or one difference, and I will show that to you when we get to that point. I have my Windows laptop here too. So current system requirements for Cricut Design Space on Windows are to have Windows 10 or later, at least four gigabytes or more of RAM, and at least two gigabytes of free disk space. On the Mac, you need to be running OS 11 or later, have at least four gigabytes of RAM and two gigabytes of free space. If you find that Cricut Design Space seems really slow, the likely culprit is your computer CPU, memory, or available hard drive space. Cricut Design Space is very fast for me, and I have virtually no problems with it ever. If you are following along with my unboxing videos in December, I unboxed a $150 Windows laptop, so we could try it out and see how it worked. It was a great price, but it was very slow. <laughs> Nothing like what I experience when I use it. So I just want everyone to keep that in mind. If you are having issues with Cricut Design Space, look first at your computer. 
Okay, so here we are in Cricut Design Space. Again, this is Cricut Design Space for desktop. If you're looking for iPad or Android, I have different classes on those. Okay, so I want to give you a tour of this. <clears throat> So uh, this is the home screen. This is what you see when you first log in. And uh, we're just gonna go across the top. The top. There's a tab at the top called Home, and there's one called the Canvas. Whenever you need to move between the home screen and the canvas, you just click up here, super easy. Over here on the right side is a bell with, in my case, it's got a little red bubble and some numbers. This is your notifications menu. If I open this, I will see that people have started following me and or liked some project of mine. And uh, if you would like to follow me, which you're more than welcome to do, everyone can, you know, there are privacy. Like in fact, if I open this up, um, you can set your own privacy. I don't want it to do that. But this little icon right here, this little gear icon, that will allow you to change your preferences for your own privacy so that you know, okay? So you don't have to be visible, people don't have to follow you, and you don't have to see every notification. I like the notifications. Anyways, if you wanna follow me, you can go to uh, jennifermaker.com slash follow me on Cricut. I put it right onto the bottom of the screen here. Uh, there's dashes in between the words, but <clears throat> that will take you to my profile on Cricut Design Space, which if you would like to see is under this menu right here at the top, um, which is the next one over. So we'll just hop on over there. So if I click on um, the picture of myself, and so for you, that's either the picture of you or your initial, if there's no picture, or actually I don't think it's a picture or an initial. If you haven't put in a picture, I think it's just like a little gray, circle with a little pretend person in it or something like that. Anyways, this is your account menu up here. And if I click on this, I can go to my profile and this is the profile that you would see and this is where you would see like a follow button. These are my projects here if you want to look at them. Um, you're welcome to make them too, of course. Um, but so everyone can have a profile if you want it, it's completely up to you. And then also under here, um, are your notifications. So if you want to go look at your notifications, settings, which is a very important menu. Let's open up that one. I guess it's going to ask me to replace it. That's fine. <clears throat> we can handle it. Okay. Design space settings. So there are several tabs across the top. Don't um, overlook that. So to start with, we I mean, there's a lot of settings for desktop. You can change your country of origin. Um, I don't even know why that matters. There must be some reason, maybe someone knows, but I'm not sure this is a new one for me. Your language, of course, that matters. Uh, you're saving, your preference for, for saving offline are right here. Which uh, application you're using, I'm currently on live, but everyone, if they want, can change to beta, which gives you early access to new features that are coming down the pike. Um, the subscription, your subscription, if you have one to Cricut Access, which I'll talk about in a moment, um, there's a little notification here about when it's going to renew. Mine is going to renew today. No, mine renewed today and it's going to renew in a year. <laughs> um, I remember why. I Someone had a question about switching from monthly to annual. So I went and I created a new subscription that day. It was right after, it was right during Cricket kickoff, like a couple years ago. Uh, anyway, so if you have an, if you if you have a Cricut Access subscription, which you don't have to have, that's here, and then your version of Cricut Design Space is listed here. You can always check for updates here, and you can always see what's new since the last time you were in with the What's New link right here. Okay, going to the next tab, we have machines. New product setup is what we did in um, Cricut Kickoff Lesson 1. So if you have a new machine, you can just come here and set it up, or you can always come back here to redo it. Update firmware, this is um, if you wanna check that your firmware is up to date at any time, you can do this. I know that you'll ask me if you need to, and no, if you need to have your firmware up to date, the Cricut Design Space will force the update. It'll just update it, but you can, you want to check it manually, you can, or update it manually, you can do that here. Machine calibration, so you can calibrate your machine for best accuracy. You would select your machine and follow the directions. 
machine care. Um, this is for the Venture. The Venture, which I have behind me here, uh, does need a little maintenance as we discussed in lesson one for the Venture. Custom material settings, let's click on that. And let's choose, we have all of these crickets currently connected. <laughs> which is a lot. So tonight we're going to focus on the Maker 3. So let's choose the Maker 3. So you can only uh, look at the custom materials for a machine that's currently connected so that you're not confused by that. That's why I was like, well, that's a long list because usually it's like one or two. All right. Um, anyways, you select your machine and <clears throat> here you can modify your settings. So if you, every time you go to cut I don't know, acetate, it doesn't quite cut quite right. It's never quite quite enough. You can actually go into acetate right here, click on the edit button, and you can change the pressure. You can see it's actually max. I have messed with my settings a lot. I don't know if this is my change or not. I never really know. <laughs> but you can you have choices and you get to customize your material settings. I do it often. You can also add a new material. You scroll all the way to the bottom and choose add new material right here. You can have all of the custom materials you want. You can make thing just for this one particular paper that you like to use and this is the setting that works best for it. And then you can choose that every single time you go to cut that paper, for example. So that's, this is very powerful. You can do this with all of the machines, all of the crickets, and you can do this from desktop and you can also do it from the iOS app, but desktop is really powerful. Okay, so, done. All right, uh, let's go back. I'm not finished in settings. All right, we were in machines. Okay, linking cartridges. I don't use cartridges. They're from a bygone age, from before I ever used a Cricut, but some of you might have cartridges that you'd like to link and you can click here to start that process. There's settings for the canvas. You can choose to have a full grid, a partial grid, or no grid. And you, that'll make more sense when you see the canvas. Same for units. You can have things in inches or you can have them in metric. And you're, you can change your, um, you can have it show your operation type or not show it in your layers panel. Uh, load type, you can choose. This is all very specific. I'm just gonna, hear some more settings. <laughs> like if you are looking to set something, Cricut has been adding a lot of settings for a really personalized experience. So if you set these things in advance, it, things go a little faster. You get prompted less often for, you know, do you want to put it on the mat or not? Do you want this size or not? You know, especially for a printing cut. If you're struggling and it's always giving you a tiny size, and you always have to keep changing it to the big size, you can change it right here. Notifications, you can choose all of the things that you want to share, activity about yourself, members who follow you, and um, even information from Cricut. So you can opt in or opt out of everything. And then the system, this just tells you the system architecture and how much memory it's using. I haven't even seen this screen before. This is a new one for me. Oh, this is good, it's not using any virtual memory, yay, <laughs> that's a good thing. And physical memory is using just 35, whatever, this looks good to me. So this looks excellent. All right, so anyways, these are your settings. It's a lot of settings. When I did the iPad and the Android earlier, they were just tiny little settings. So the, the, the Cricut Design Space desktop app is more powerful by quite a bit as far as I'm concerned. Also, Cricut Design Space for desktop is my preference. This is where I prefer to do all of my designing and cutting is on my computer. <clears throat> okay, and then across the top here, this is the name of your project. Actually, let's go back to home. Well, we're starting at home, right? So across the top here, you can search right here. You can search images, projects, fonts, and profiles. So you could also search for me here if you wanted to. Over here, where it says it's a green button with a plus sign, this is where you can start a new project. If I click this right now, well, there was a project on my screen. <laughs> But if you have a project on your screen, it should caution you not to. Let's try that again. I was going to put in a free shape. I will explain what I'm doing. Let's go back to home and let's try a new project. There we go. 
So this is what you would normally see if there was a project on your screen. Um, it would tell you, it would, it would warn you that a project already exists on your canvas with unsaved changes. I think my project was saved, so that's why it's okay. Do you want to replace it? So if you don't want to replace it, click cancel. If you don't mind replacing it, go ahead and do um, replace. Or you can, of course, save it too. So that is how you would get to a new window. All right, going back to home. <clears throat> Let's go back to the Discover menu. This is the Discover menu. So uh, there's a lot. They have really updated their app a lot in the last year. So down on the left side of the panel here, this is the, the Discover window. All sorts of awesome projects things to inspire, projects to discover, all those things. I highly recommend taking a walkthrough of this screen to find awesome new fonts, awesome new projects, awesome new people. There's a Cricut community projects. This is projects that people like us make and save to share with others. So really, really cool. Uh, and you can always go right to your stuff. If I click on that, you'll see recent projects that I have been saving and working on. All of my collections along the side. Collections are folders that um, you can organize your projects into. If you have a free account, you get five free. If you have Cricut Access, you get an unlimited number. All right, so discover my stuff. Get started is like, you know, Cricut Learn, educational resources, I think, what's that? Yes. There's a little video here, super cute video. And now I have to get back, there we go. There's also the heat guide right here on the side. The shop is here. There's a navigation tour, all sorts of things. I definitely recommend spending some time on this screen and really understanding it. Okay, but where all the action happens is on your Canvas. So let's click on Canvas. So this is where you'll spend most of your time designing. This is the canvas. We have a nice big blank canvas here to start working on. I'm gonna put away my follow button so that you can see all of the buttons that are available. We've got button or options all the way across the top. They're grayed out right now. Grayed out means like a light gray, so you can't really see them. That means they're inactive. So you can't click on these things. And then that's along the top. Along the side, we have more icons. We can click on these. These lead to other things and resources. On the side, the right side here, this is our layers panel. So once we have something on our canvas, it will appear in a list here. And uh, we should really just dive in and start. Um, untitled project means it's brand new. And then along the top over here, we've got another link to my stuff. If ever you're struggling to find your stuff, it's linked everywhere. And this, in this one right here that says Explore 3, this is the machine that is currently selected in Cricut Design Space. We're gonna focus on, we're gonna make our first project on the Maker 3, so I'm actually gonna switch that right now to Cricut Maker 3. And this matters because if you've got, you need the right machine selected so you can see the right features that are available for you. All right, so, uh, starting here and going on down the top. So starting at the top left, you have another plus button. So if you wanted to start another new project, you could click right here. But I actually want to show you something and this is a great time to do it. So one of the really cool features of Cricut Design Space is the ability to have multiple windows open. <coughs> Excuse me multiple windows open. I don't know if a lot of you know how to do this. I wanna show you how. So if I just click this, I just get you know an, another blank window, which I already have. It's not gonna give me another one. So, but I personally have multiple windows with multiple projects going on at any one time. So I'm gonna show you how I do it on, and I'm gonna to have to go to a wider view so that you can see it. So my screen is gonna look a little messy, So, but hang in there with me. So. I'm going to switch to this view. This is the whole view of my desktop right now. To get a new window on Cricut Design Space for desktop, you go to File and you choose New Window. And there is a new window. And you can see I actually have a lot of windows open right now. Okay? So that's how you open up a new window. Let's go back here and hopefully it saved all my changes. Okay, good. And then I want to show you it's different. This is the one thing I know that's different between um, 
Mac and Windows. So I'm showing it to you. So let's do an overhead so you can see just this. We're going to need to zoom in a little bit more, I think. Just a second. And I know it's just, it's just a, um, uh, you know, picture of my laptop, but you'll get the idea. So this is my Windows laptop. So to open a new window on a Windows laptop, you want to click on these three dots that you see up here. Click on that. And there's File, New Window. I'm going to hold this up so you can see it. I want everyone to see how to open a new window on whatever, whether you're using Mac or window, because it's very powerful to be able to have multiple windows open. You can be working on one and then go do and cut something else, get something queued up. Often what I like to do is work on a project, send it to my Cricut, and then I just open up a new window and I just work in that window on my next project. So I'm not wasting any time. That's not an option on iPad or Android. <clears throat> okay. So back to our split screen. Okay, I'm bringing my keyboard back. All right, so <clears throat> there's yet more options down here. I don't want to overwhelm you, but I also don't want to leave anything out. So I'll try to do a brief overview of what these things are. Remember that there is the map in the Cricut Kickoff Handbook, right? So if I mention something and you just can't remember what it is, check out the map and that will help you understand what everything is, okay? So along the left, we've got templates, which are awesome for putting a template onto your, your screen and then you can design around it. So this is like an apron. You can hide and hide it and show it. Uh, projects are access to all those awesome projects you saw on the front page, but you can search them and you can filter them. There are currently 129,000 projects, all searchable, and you can filter by all of these awesome things. So if you're looking for something, look here and then use your filter power <laughs> to filter down. Remember to use good keywords too, you know, like use proper good search terms. Um, the shapes menu, I use this all the time, the shapes menu we use for getting shapes. <laughs> At the top we've got free shapes and below that we have shapes that are included in Cricut Access. And I think this is a great time to talk about Cricut Access um, because we haven't yet. So if I go back to settings and I go to settings here and I mentioned that there was now, this takes me to, now I am a Cricut Access subscriber. If I click on this, what happens? Oh, it just takes me to, it just takes me right to Cricut.com. So I can't really show it to you, but I can show you some things about it. Let's go back to our Discover page, because this is useful. Yes, this is a great page here. All right, so, and I'm going to tell you about Cricut Access. So, Cricut Access is an optional subscription plan that's on top of Cricut Design Space. Cricut Design Space is free. Cricut Access is an additional cost. There are products reserved just for Access subscribers. There are, um, like if you see this little green flag with the A I'm pointing at right now, that means that's a Cricut Access project and you can make it without paying anything extra. There's discounts, there's, um, like only people who have Cricut Access can purchase the mystery box. So there's special perks. There's special um, features inside Design Space. There are premium features just for Cricut Access. None of the basic things that you need. Like here's, here's a little thing about Cricut Access. None of the basic things that you need to do your projects, but special things. And they've been adding more, like the ability to warp text or the editable images or unlimited collections, things like that. But it's an optional subscription program. So the benefits are there's like 600,000 images right now that you would get access to. Over a thousand, so over 700 fonts and about 1,000 um, editable projects and then plus you get discounts on licensed designs. Now licensed designs, many of them are not included in, in Cricut Access. Cricut Access isn't everything is free. That's not what that is. Um, but I would say most things are. Most things are included in that. 
Now, a lot of people confuse Cricut Access with Design Space, but they are not the same. Cricut Design Space is the free software that you use to create or upload designs and cut them with your Cricut. All Cricut Enjoy, Explore Family, Maker, and Venture users need to download and use the free Cricut Design Space software. It is required, there's no other alternative. You use Cricut Design Space, but they do not need to pay for Cricut Access unless they want to. So most people ask me if I think Cricut Access is worth it, and I think it is, if you will use it. So basically the benefits are, again, that you get access to tons of images, and new images are added weekly, plus access to so many fonts, including writing fonts, which is the primary reason that I initially got an access account, because I love having great writing fonts. If you find that you're ever buying images or fonts from Design Space, an access subscription pays for itself very quickly. You also get faster member care, like twice as fast because you get priority support over those who don't have access. You get a 10% savings on all product purchases on Cricut.com, machines, accessories, materials, and more, including sale items. You also save 10% on premium licensed fonts, images, and ready to make projects from brands like Disney, because those things are not usually, I don't think they're ever included in Cricut Access, because you know, Disney. <laughs> Another perk is exclusive discounts on products like the mystery boxes with Cricut Cuties. There's a lot to talk about with Cricut Access, and you know, I'm gonna move on from this, but I, if you want to learn more, go to jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Access to see the list of the perks and a bunch of other answers to questions I get. Now I have Cricut Access, I have my own subscription, and a general reminder to anybody who's watching this and doesn't know, I don't work for Cricut. Cricut doesn't pay for my Cricut Access, Cricut doesn't pay for my machines, I pay for these myself. So this is this is the way I like to do it, this is my preference. Cricut is very generous and constantly offers, which thank you Cricut, but I like to buy all my own things so that I always understand the value of what it is and so that I can pass on an honest opinion of that to you. Okay, so just sometimes, as I'm talking about Cricut Access, I'm like, oh man, I sound so official. <laughs> But I'm not. <laughs> I'm not official cricket anything. I'm unofficial cricket. <laughs> All right, so um, I have cricket access. So that means I have access to a lot of images and fonts you may or may not have. Right, so I have access. Right, you can tell if something is included in access when you see this small green flag. So see on this front page all these green flags? These are all cricket access, um, part of cricket access, right? Um, and this flag identifies the item as one that's included with a Cricut Access subscription. If you have a Cricut Access subscription, um, instead of including a price, it, see how it set, it'll have, it'll say, it's like it says it would have normally cost 99 cents, but instead it's, cro it's grayed and crossed out, okay? <laughs> so it'll just say that so that you're not confused. All right, so that's Cricut Access. All right, let's go back to our canvas and continue on. All right, we are on the shapes menu. There are these shapes down here that you can get if you have Cricut Access. Honestly, I usually just use free shapes. They're just fine. So I'm gonna click on a heart. You just click on it and it just automatically adds to your canvas. Let's zoom in a little bit more. That looks really far away. By the way, you can use keyboard commands to get right into your, if you do it like on the Mac, Command 1, it zooms in. It's really awesome. So if you're ever struggling with your, like, just like you saw me right now, it kind of like was somewhere weird, you can um, zoom in with Command 1 on the window, on Windows lap computers, it's Control 1. All right, so there's our shape. Yay, we have a heart. <laughs> so shapes are really useful. I use them all the time for designing and just really for lots of things. So you're gonna get really familiar with the shapes menu. Below shapes, we have images. This gives you access to the 600,000 images that are included or part of Cricut. Um, so if you are not a Cricut Access member, you can purchase images, whether if they're not free. Um, you can search on them. So let's search for one right now. Let's say star, let's search for stars. There are 15,000 stars. Now these are all stars, but you can filter things right here. So I could say that I'm interested in just free stars. 
So let's just click free right here at the top. And that gives me 32 stars. And these stars are all free to use. I do want to note that free to use currently does not mean free to use forever. So there will be some shapes that will be free you know, or images that are, I've never seen them for sale. They've always been free, but there's no guarantees. So if you see something free and you wanna make it, you don't have a Cricut Access account, make it right away. Don't assume that it'll be free next week. There's free items coming in and out of free freedom <laughs> all the time so that you get the chance to try things. But just because you grabbed it while it's free doesn't mean that it remains free, okay? But lots and lots of all these, these are all um, ways that you can search for content for images. All right, next one is text. So when I click on text, it will put a text box on the screen. We're now zoomed in really far. Let's do that again because I was impatient and did it twice. All right. All right. When we click on text, it will put a text bar, uh, window on the screen. And it's still, I'm just zoomed in too far, I think. Let's zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to delete all of that. And I'm going to try to do it at a reasonable size here. Okay, we'll, we'll stay right here. Okay, when you click on text, a text box appears on the screen. It looks like this by default, the word text, and um, it's highlighted already. I can right now just start typing. So I can put in my name and it will immediately put that text in. What I see happen, and then you can actually click somewhere else on the canvas to exit the editing mode. And now this is just in selection mode. So See, they're both, this is when you see the box show up around them, that means selected. That's pretty normal on a, com, you know, a computer or device. But um, if you need to get back to edit your text, you just double click on it. And there we go. See that highlight shows up again. And you can actually put your cursor, you know, where you want it to go. You know, if you, or you can move with your cursor keys and you can move in and out along your, your name and you can type more. You can use the return key. <laughs> That's the first thing that came to mind. This is a better one. <laughs> it's funny. I am tired. This is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. My twelfth live class in three days. Okay. <laughs> This is also the last one. So anyways, I am happy because we are making awesome things together. So this is, this is text. We'll talk more about text when we do our personalized project. But um, I also want to, I'm going to move this down and I'm going to focus on our shape. I'm going to get in there. Let's get in there nice and big, maybe a little bit smaller. Okay. So this heart, I want you to see this box that shows up around it when I click on it, when I select it with my mouse, right? And I'm just clicking on it, right? This is called the bounding box. And this box shows the boundary of it, bounding box, right? But it also has cool things about it. One is that when it's selected, it will show you the size of your object. So in this case, we've got two inches by 1.77 inches. So um, that's nice to know, like whenever you need to know the size, the size does appear in another spot up here, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but it is up there. And you can also use these corners that you see here, these little handles. They look like little boxes in the corner. You can use them to change the size of any layer. So if I click, hold and drag in or out, it changes the size. The same thing works for the text. Uh, I need to zoom out a little bit though. It's very large. So see, I can make it smaller and bigger. We'll put this over here. Um, so you can use those to resize things really easily. You can also use, um, you can also do um, a rotate. So if you just click on the corner and I'm going to zoom in uh, again a little bit. I want to make sure you really see what I'm doing here. So, no, I don't want to move that over. Let's uh, move my screen over a little bit. Where'd my menu bar go? I'm using my keyboard right now. You don't have to remember how to do this, but if you, I'm using my mouse and my, can you see my mouse? Oh, I can't get my mouse out enough. 
There's my, oh, I can't, it doesn't reach. It's down here really low. I'm using my mouse wheel right now to move my canvas up and down like this. Um, and if you hold down, was it the shift key? You can actually use the mouse wheel to scroll it back and forth. So see, I'm holding down the shift key right here. I presume it works with the shift key too. I have a whole sheet of keyboard shortcuts if you are interested. Um, I think that we put them on our Facebook page. Okay, anyways, so you can resize with any of the corners. It doesn't have to be just that one corner. All the corners will resize. And also all the corners can rotate. So if you move your cursor a little bit past, you'll see it changed to a curved circle with arrows. And then you can just click, drag, and hold, and it will rotate for you. And if you hold down the shift key on your keyboard, it rotates in nice little increments. So if you want to get that perfect 90 degrees, you just have to hold down the shift key. All right, so this is a little, and this works for all the layers that you might have, whether it's text or a shape or some fancy image that you found or anything like that. Okay. Phrases, continue on with our tour, phrases is um, a subset of the database that allows you to um, search for phrases. So those of you who like to make t-shirts and mugs and with, you know, cute things like this is my emotional support blanket or hey baby, you can, <laughs> Greg just gave me a look. <laughs> it's funny, he's sitting right over here. Anyways, um, you, you can search through here, lots of images and there's free ones. Look, all these free ones here. Aren't these cute? Oh, handmade with love. That's super adorable. All right, so that's phrases. So it's just a subset. Now, editable images is a relatively new feature. This is a Cricut Access, um, Cricut Access exclusive. You can, you can always play around with things. Even if you can't cut it, you can play with it. So the editable images lets you it's kind of like what it exactly says. Like I can just put this under the screen right now. I'm gonna add that to the canvas, you just select it. Click add to canvas. Let's zoom out, oh, it's very large. And let's move this right here. And then I can change this text, right? So I can click on this and I can change it to be Jennifer. Right, so super cool, easy, it's um, a really, quick way to make a gift for someone, for example, um, without having to worry about your own design skills. So that's editable images, and I'm gonna delete that. There we go. Okay, uh, next is upload. We're gonna get to that. I'm gonna skip over that for now. We're gonna talk about that when we do our personalized project. And then monogram is another Cricut Access exclusive feature. It lets you make cute monograms. So you just type in your initials and you get to choose themes and it makes really cute monograms. All right, so that's the, what we have down the left. <clears throat> Across the top here, we have all of our actions and our, our ability to edit things, okay? So um, right here, very importantly, this is undo. This arrow here that points to the left is undo or in your screen it would point like this way. And then the one pointing to the right is redo. So if I undo this, we should see what I just did get undone, but I'm gonna go forward and go back, okay? And I'm gonna delete my text. <laughs> it just feels kind of silly. <laughs> All right, so there's our heart. <clears throat> Um, moving across the bar, we have the operation menu, very important. The operation menu lets you change the operation, the type, so what your layer is set to. By default, most things are set to basic cut, which this one is, and we can see it says when it's selected, when we select it, see, and it tells us what the operation is. It will also tell us over here in the layers panel, but we can switch it. So let's say we wanted to draw this with our pen. I could change this to draw a pen and it will change to an outline because that's how the pen works and it will draw the heart for me. Um, if this is what you would, the options on um, Cricut Joy are cut, draw, and foil. And on the Joy Extra, it adds in print then cut. And then we move up to the explore and we add in score. And in addition, I'm adding in these things. And then when we move up to the maker, 
we get all everything that you see here because I have my machine set to the maker. Um, and, and all the machines can use a guide. If I select guide, it just changes to a pink line that we can use to help us with designing things. But this pink, these guidelines will not cut or draw or anything like that. So they're, they're just there for, you know, designing. Okay, I'm going to undo that too. All right, go all the way. There we go. All right, and then right next to operation is what I call the color picker. And if you click on this, you get to pick the color. <laughs> so there are preset colors right up here. So we can change this right now to red just by clicking red. But if you would like your own custom color, you can click on advanced and then you have access to all, like the whole spectrum of that one particular color. And you can also choose other colors with this spectrum slider here. You can even type in a hex code down here if you need to match a color. So, but we're gonna go with red, because I love red, it's my favorite color. All right, next to that is deselect, on the off chance that you wanna deselect. Um, when you're not, when nothing is selected, you can just select, this will select all. So there's a select all that may or may not, you know, may or, sometimes it's useful when you have to select everything. So right there, and then the edit menu, lets you do the normal edit functions that you probably you use your keyboard for. I know I do. So, and the keyboard shortcuts are right there so that you, you know, this is like the basic stuff. So cut, which is command X on Mac, control X on Windows, copy, paste, duplicate, delete. All those normal things, but you don't have to use your keyboard. If you're not into using your keyboard, you can just use this menu. I prefer to use my keyboard, <laughs> but that's all, it's all, it's all up to all, everybody gets to decide. And this is in fact a great time to tell you about the secret menu. It's not really a secret, but it's, it's, it's not obvious for those of you who aren't used to things like this. So I wish I could, oh, I do have a mouse I could show you on. Hey, Greg, do you still have that mouse? Did you take it? I didn't take it. Huh. I wonder where it went. I was going to show, I can't pull my, uh, can you look to see and find my that mouse I was using earlier today? Because I want to show them something and my mouse won't reach. It is too short. Well, any mouse. How about that mouse over there connected to the Mac? Sorry, everybody. To that one over there? Dropped it. Oh, I dropped it. Thank you. Okay, mouse. Okay, let's just do a quick refresher on our mouse because we are using a computer. I'm not a trackpad. I know this laptop over here has a trackpad. I do not like the trackpad. I get, I have so many issues with it. I'm just not a trackpad kind of girl. Um, even though I've had laptops with them for such a long time, I am much happier with a mouse. Okay. Anyways, so if you struggle with your trackpad, get a mouse. Um, this is just a mouse that we have. No, no fancy mouse, but um, on most mouses, you have the left click button, which is right here, the right click, which is here. Most of the time you're just clicking here, right? If you click, however, and then this is the scroll, scroll wheel, this will move things up and down. If you click on the right button, you can act, usually access a lot of cool things. Okay, just in case you've never tried that before. You can do this with a trackpad. On the trackpad, you see the trackpad here? Usually you have to tap on this side to get to it, okay? So that you know. Anyways, so if you, going back to Cricut Design Space, if you right click on a layer, you get the secret menu. <laughs> and the secret menu has a bunch of options in it and what options you have depends on what your what layer is selected, its status, what is going on with it, all those kinds of things. So you could ungroup, grouping and ungroup right from here, cut, duplicate, delete, all the things. There's lots of things. I use this, it's really a contextual menu. It's not a secret menu, but I use this all the time. And it's just a right click, or I guess a right tap on your trackpad. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and duplicate right now. Now we have two hearts. Uh, yeah, so, just so you know about that menu, I want to be sure you know about it. Let's change this heart to blue. Okay, really nice and easy. Okay, 
Moving across, our next one is, and I'm gonna actually, actually let's talk about selecting. So I've told you that you can just click on things to select them. You can also click on them from the layers panel right here if you want to. If you need to select multiple things, there's a couple ways to do it. You can, of course, click on select all at the top of the screen, like I told you. But you can, if you just wanna select some things and not all things, you can hold down the shift key on your keyboard right here and select two items in your list or more, right? So over, over here in your layers panel, you can do two items. Another way you can do it is to click, hold and drag a bounding box around and it doesn't have to completely encompass both layers or all layers, just catch them, right? So it just has to touch them. And then you have the layers that you selected around selected or you drew your box around right so that's um, a way to select you can also do select all from the keyboard command a or control a if you want to all right but let's let me sh do this and show you the next um, items align it lets you align a whole bunch of different ways you're going to align left you can align the tops which you know they're, the, they're like the same size let's make one a little bit different Notice I'm holding down my shift key right here um, so that it's just a habit. You didn't really have to do that because it's actually locked still, but whatever. Okay, so now it's slightly different size. Um, that's what I do. It's just one of those designer things. All right, so we can align them horizontally, vertically, all the ways. Centered, that was pretty much the same. Um, right, right. So align is really useful. Um, you can also arrange them so you can group and ungroup here and you can send items to the front or back on your canvas it may not it often will not make any difference for when you actually go to cut them but when you're designing sometimes like something needs to be behind something else you could come over to the layers panel and just like move it down like this but you can also just go to arrange and send to back like that so if ever something is missing go find it in the layers panel and choose send to front you can flip things so i can flip this upside down or it's mirror dimension so you won't see that so there it is flip vertical <laughs> but if we rotated it we now use that corner box to rotate it and then flipped it like this you can see it flips but let's undo all of that there we go and we can also offset. Offset is an awesome, really awesome, useful feature. So if we click on offset, you can, you see this blue outline that appeared? Let's actually move this down so you can see it better. See that blue outline that's appeared around it? So you can create an offset for a shape. This is really useful for decals, stickers, things like that, or just designing in general. You can control how much of an offset there is and how little, so you can actually do an inset. It's a very light blue, it's hard to see, but there is one there. And, um, but I'll just do an offset. You can choose smooth corners or square corners, click apply, and now you have a new offset layer, which is super cute, right? Um, warp is a, which you can see up here, this is a text feature. So let's add some text to our canvas again. And again, it put it, there we go. All right, so let's say hello. Let's try that again. There we go. All right, so here's our text and we can choose warp. And um, again, Cricut access feature, but you can play with it. So you can do cool warping shapes. That's kind of, you can't see it. Let's move it down here. Um, See, all sorts of cool things. You can actually control how much warp there is too, right here, and then you can undo it. So it's, if, you, if you love to make t-shirts, this is a fun feature. All right, going back to <clears throat> what we were working on. So um, next, going back to our heart. Oh yes, the size menu. So I told you about how you can, oops, that was my menu, I just hit my right, my right key. Um, you can see the size right here. Um, and if you selected it, it'll tell you the size, right? But it also tells you the size right up here. So 1.719 inches by 1.519 inches. So if you wanted a more exact size, you could attempt to drag it, but it's kind of tricky to get exactly two inches. It's much easier to just type two 
into the size box up here. So I type the two and then I press return or enter to set it. And this little lock icon right here maintains the proportions when it's locked, which it is by default. So, <clears throat> one moment. <coughs> okay. So, the lock icon closed. You might have heard me say that in my tutorials. I've said that so many times. We, when we resize it, we keep all the proportions, right? If we unlock it, so now you see the little lock icon up here is open, the little lock is. Now when we resize it, we can change the proportions. So you can have a short chonky heart or a tall skinny heart, just like that. And um, it's up to you. Sometimes a design will call for it and sometimes it won't. So I'm going to undo that and it should be locked again. But you can also lock it. You can lock it in that new proportion and then resize it too. And then you can rotate. So if you struggle to get the right rotation from here, you can rotate it up here instead just by typing that in. And then this more menu will show up. Let's undo that actually. <clears throat> this more menu here will show up when your screen is a little bit more narrow than there's enough room for. I had to make my screen narrower for you so that I could fit all these different windows in tonight. But um, you can just click this to get access to them. And it's not even a super important function in my opinion. It's the position of the item on the screen. Occasionally you need to nudge something a little bit up or down or maybe you can't find it. You need to bring it back to zero or something like that. So you can ch manually change it here if you need to. Um, honestly, I never use that. If I have to move things a little bit, I use my keyboard. So I'm just pressing the arrow keys on my keyboard to move backward and forward like this. And it works for up and down too. See how I'm nudging it just a little bit? If you hold down your shift key, you can get a much bigger movement. If that's helpful to you to know. All right, so that's across the top. And then the layers panel over here, um, it's on layers tab, but there's also another tab. If you click right here, this is the color sync tab. And this is useful for times when you might have two different reds, but don't realize it and you wanna check and you can't figure out why it's sticking one heart on one mat and a different color on another mat when they're supposed to both be red and both supposed to be cut out of the same paper for example. So you can use color sync to get everything into the color you want. So for example, if I wanted everything to be red right now, all I have to do is drag it into the red, just like this. And now everything will be red, right? So it's an easy way to get the same color or to, you know, sync up your colors. That's why it's called color sync. But let's go back and undo all that because I like my colors. All right. Um, and I should actually note, see how even though our text appears black, it's actually a dark gray. And it shows us that here. So if we wanted our text to be black, the same black that you see around this offset, it would be a good idea for us to move it up here into the black. So it all cuts from the same mat. So that's color sync. Going back to layers though, I mean, basically this just shows us our layers. At the top here, we have group and ungroup. So if you, our letters are grouped, our text letters are grouped, um, but we, and we can ungroup them if we want to. I'm not gonna go into that right now, but um, you can also group items. Grouping is a, a way to organize things on your canvas. So if I select these three hearts and choose group, they now become a group. They're all nested under this group icon right here and I can select them and they're all selected as a group and I can move them around as a group and I can resize them as a group and it's useful when you're designing. But this is just for on your canvas. It is not, they're not gonna cut together like this or anything like that. This is just a design group. Um, and then you can ungroup the same way you just click it again and it ungroups it. Or you can use that, that menu that the secret menu I mentioned, right? So if these are these were grouped again and we right clicked on this, we can ungroup right from here. Okay, um, a lot, across the top you can also duplicate from here. So I can click this and I can get another heart. 
I can delete from my keyboard. <laughs> and uh, you can delete also from here too. So, and so that's at the cross the top. And then each of these items here are the things on your canvas and you can click them to enable the bounding box will appear around them. You can even change the name of them by double clicking on them. You all asked me and told me last year that you so wish that Cricut had this ability. Well, they listened to you and now you can rename your layers. So yay. So you can rename them here and then it says what the operation type is right here, which is really very helpful too. And you can hide and show your layers so that you, if you don't want to cut them or design with them, you can just hide them. So now that blue heart is hidden, but not deleted. And if I want to see it again, I just click it again and there it is. At the bottom of the menu, we have any template that we might have applied. So I've hidden it right now, but this is our apron template. And if I zoom out, I should be able to see it somewhere on my canvas, though I don't. Just, oh, I see, it's just so big. <laughs> There's the apron, right? So we could put these hearts under our, uh, under our apron and make a cute little apron right there if we wanted, right? So I'm using keyboard shortcuts again to zoom in. So it's just Command plus on Windows, it would be Control plus. All right, so, but I'm gonna hide that. Templates, again, are like guides. They're just custom shapes and you can use them for designing. Below this, we're almost to the end of the tour, everybody. <laughs> Below this are five more icons, and these are our main actions, our most popular ones. So I'm gonna select some things here. Let's duplicate again. Let's put another heart on here. So um, if we select both, we actually get access to a lot of these now because these actions mostly apply to groups of, or multiples, you know, more than one layer, I think is the right way to say that. So we can slice, that's at the very bottom of the screen, but slice lets you slice one layer out of another. It works only with two layers and only two layers. If you're trying to use slice and it's not working, you probably accidentally have more than two layers selected. So I'm gonna click it so you can see what it's like. So once I click slice now, and I'll, I'll move this one out of our way. Now, if I pull it apart, you can see that it has indeed sliced out the middle of the heart. There we go, right? So this is slice. Slice is really useful for creating new shapes, for removing big sections of designs, or just that little thing you didn't really need, because um, you can just slice it out with a shape, right? So that is slice, very useful for many things. I use it in many of my tutorials. But let's undo that, go back to the way it was. Uh, one more, there we go. And I could tell that it wasn't, like if I go back one more, you can see, oops, forward I mean, we do that. See how that, those black lines, those are our cut lines. So I could tell that it was sliced. So I wanted to go back one more. Now, the combine menu, right next to slice, lets you um, weld. Weld is like a permanent super glue, so, um, it's like the, it's kind of the opposite of slice. It basically combines things and it sticks them together permanently. So if I click weld, we now have this shape and this is just one shape. So you can see in the layers panel, it's called weld result and it is a new shape and it's going to be like this forever unless you undo it right now. Another option that you could do, however, so let's undo that, is um, unite instead. So if I select these two and I go to combine and choose unite, now it looks really similar, but there's a difference. So it's still that like one shape, but notice over in the layers panel that we have still these two hearts nested inside unite and we can actually change these. So I can put the two hearts side by side like this. And then when I click out of it, Look at this, so this is like a new shape. So it's like weld that you could undo and move. This is another request that you've all had in Cricut Design Space, and Cricut, Cricut the company, um, listened to and tried to, and created this combined feature so that you can make a weld that can be undone, you know, day, a week, years later. It's pretty awesome. I still use weld a lot, I'll be honest, but it's because it's mostly habit at this point. 
So that is Unite. And there are, let's undo that back to the way it was. There we go. And then there are others in here too. I use them less. Subtract is kind of like a, um, well, I'll just do it and I'll show you. So see, it, it subtracted the top layer from the bottom layer. And the next one is, and all of, all of these ones right down here at the bottom, these four, unite, subtract, intersect, and exclude, they're all modifiable. All right, um, intersect, um, only the parts, the, two, the, the layers that we're intersecting are left. And with the last one, exclude, anything that was overlapping is excluded. So this can create some fun shapes. And again, they are modifiable. So I can just click on one of those hearts. And when I click out of it, I have this shape. So that's pretty cool. And I think that's a great addition. And uh, you know, that's part of the core Cricut Design Space. They did not say that was a Cricut Access um, exclusive option, which I appreciate. <clears throat> All right, also down at the bottom is our last a function that people often get confused with group and weld and combine, and it is called attach. It's right here. Attach is different than both group and weld and combine. Attach leaves the layers as individual separate layers, but tells Cricut Design Space that you want those items to cut together, draw together, foil together, whatever it is you want, it will keep them together when you go to use your Cricut. So if I click attach right now, you'll see that they remain separate and they're nested under over here under attach, but you know, and I can move them around, but what matters, what matters is that even though they're separate, when I go to cut them, they're going to cut um, together. They're gonna stay right there. And that's important and you'll see why when we do our project, okay? All right, and then um, flatten, Let's select all of these things to show you Flatten. Flatten is right here. It won't be available if you have the Cricut Joy, but it's available for everything else. Flatten is used for print and cut. So if you make a design and you wanna print it, make some stickers or a t-shirt or whatever, you're doing sublimation, whatever it is, um, this is a great way to create print and cut designs. And you'll see it changed to print and cut over here on the left. And you can always unflatten, so. It's unflattened now. When it's flattened, it will cut, it will, it will print to your printer as one unit. And then when you put it into your Cricut, it will cut out the outline of those objects. So, you know. All right, and then the last one over here is contour. Contour is harder to show you without making a shape. And I'll do it real quick. I'll take this heart. I'll, I gotta detach that. All right, so I'm gonna take this heart. And well, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take this one here and I'm gonna just center them, align center, and then I'll use slice to slice out the inside of that heart, okay? So we have done that now, we have a heart shape now. And uh, so now if I use contour, you'll see that, well now you can see that contour is lit up because now there is, it's a more complex image, it's not just a single shape. Um, that's what contour is for. And if I click it, I can now manipulate the different parts of the image. So we use contour to um, turn the cut on and off of different things. So if you find a design you really like, but it's got some weird part on it that you don't like or something about it isn't right for you, you can come into contour and modify it and make it right for you. So you can say hide all contours and it'll just go back to the shape. See? So that's contour. Okay, and I think that's mostly everything. I should know, I didn't, I didn't call attention to the zoom down here, so you can zoom in and out using the, the plus and minus air, um, icons on this thing in the lower left, and you can scroll side to side using the scroll bar. There we go. Um, so yeah, I think that's everything. So are you ready to make a project with me? Because I would love to show you. So we're going to make this super cute card together. This is a You Are A Star. So we're gonna make it as a certificate, but you can have this design and make it as a card for someone that you care about. <clears throat> okay, so 
the way that we're going to do this is I've designed this for you and I'm going to give it to you free because I, that's basically what I do. I love to give things away for free, but you need to go get it. So in your Cricut Kickoff Handbook on page 27, you will find all the instructions. So if you need to follow along afterwards, everything is here for our simple project that we're going to personalize. We're going to begin by how to find, download, and unzip an SVG file. Okay, I said that right there so I don't forget anything. To do that, we are going to go to um, my website. Oops, that's not it. I'll show it to you in just a second. I have to get to it. <clears throat> All right, that's really big. Let's make it a little smaller. There we go. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff on the screen. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to try to make it a little bit neater for you so you can see just the parts that matter. There we go. All right, so this is my website, jennifermaker.com. So I keep all of my free files in my libraries. So to find them, you go to libraries in the red bar at the top, and you can either get a password if you don't want yet have one. Passwords are free. My, my, these files in my libraries are free. Um, so you just can get a password. I just like to protect them so people can't embed them on their own sites. And then you click enter the library so you can go in there. Um, hopefully I've already entered my password. I haven't. All right, so I'm going to put in my password. I'm just going to do it so that you can't see what I'm typing. <laughs> I don't think it even, I think it just showed dots. So it didn't matter. <laughs> All right, so here we are in my password. All my little prompts have come up. Okay, this is the, what the, pa this is what the library looks like. Um, if you are new to my library, please watch this video to learn how it works. Uh, but essentially, the simplest way to explain it is that all of my projects are in here. We have over 576 projects. Most have multiple files in them, like multiple designs, or not just one design. And the first link you see here is the design itself, like the collection of designs. The second link that you see, so first link, for example, this is a new font that we just released. And, oops, I'm going to close my Windows laptop. It's beeping at me. Um, the first link is, uh, I'll show you this one, is the design. <clears throat> and the second link is the tutorial on how to do it step by step. So, for I have moved our Cricut, Cricut Cricut Kickoff Project to the top of the library to help you find it tonight. So you want to click here to download it. If you're watching this video later and you don't see this convenient yellow box at the top of my library, you can search the page. So to search a page, you type, I'm just going to show you my keyboard so you can see. On the keyboard, you press either Control F or Command F like this, right? And that brings you to a search bar right in your right in your browser and you just search for the number the number is is listed in your handbook so you don't have to remember but it's 277 and it's right here so if you can't find it okay but we're here tonight so let's just use the one at the top all right here we go so when you download it, it goes into your downloads folder. If you're on Chrome like I am, it will show up in this little icon you can see with a little arrow pointing down in a line. That's like tells you the recent downloads and then you can just click on it. And there it is in my downloads. You see that? I know it's a little bit small, but it's right there. Now I'm on a Mac and my, all of my zips aut automatically decompress for me. Um, <laughs> they might not automatically decompress for you. If you are not sure how to unzip a file, the simplest way I can tell you is to right click on it and choose, um, I don't even have to do this with this one. So um, it just will open for me. On Windows, if you right click it, you can click extract all. I have a whole tutorial on how to unzip files. If this is confusing to you, it goes much slower. It shows you screenshots of Windows and Mac. It is at um, jennifermaker.com slash svgs, okay? Um, but mine just unzips for me automatically. It's super easy. And it, all the files are inside. So uh, there's extra files in there that help you, teach you and explain to you, give you links. The one that matters is the one that's called SVG. And I put the, the word, the, 
acronym SVG, which stands for Scalable Vector Graphics, right into the file name of all of my SVGs, which are cut files. Um, not all designers do that, so what instead you need to do uh, to identify your files is either look for SVG, it'll say SVG is the kind, it might also say Edge HTML or Chrome HTML or something like that. If you don't have a program that can read SVG files installed on your computer, like Inkscape or Illustrator, okay? Especially on Windows. So if you've ever downloaded a file and you open it up and you're like, I don't see an SVG here, just know that that's what's going on. It's probably on Windows, it's probably called Edge HTML. <laughs> it used to be Chrome HTML, but then they had to put the Edge browser on all of their computers in Windows, so now it's Edge HTML. All right, so um, we have our SVG. Now, don't double click this, so try to open it from here. And so you need to go back to Cricut Design Space. So the, here's my icon in my dock down here. And I'll click on that, and we're gonna go back to the nice simple view. Although actually what we want is this view, so you can see everything. This is the better view. So uh, in this view, <clears throat> we're going to upload our file. We're gonna just make a new project. We're gonna get rid of all of this, nice clean slate. And now you go to the upload icon, you click on that, and you click upload image. And then you click browse. And you find that image you downloaded, it's probably in your downloads folder, in a folder called Cricut, oops, you can't see right now, sorry everybody. Let's re redo that. You can only see from here, the big messy window. We'll do that again. So you click on upload, and you click on upload image, and then you click on browse, and then you go, find the download. It's probably in your downloads folder. Here's my downloads folder. Here's the Cricut kickoff certificate. I double click that to open it and there is my SVG that I want to upload. It'll be the only item in the folder that you can upload. You can't upload text files or anything like that. So um, occasionally some designers will put PNG or JPEG files in their cut files. I typically don't do that specifically because it can confuse you. So I really just put SVG files in my SVG file zips. Um, if I'm doing a sublimation project, those will have PNGs, but we're focusing on Cricut tonight, so SVGs. So then you click open. All right, so now we can go back to the nice clean view, which is this one. All right, so this is what it looks like when it first uploads. Uh, you can change the name, put in some tags if you want. Um, if you were uploading a PNG or JPEG, you would have the option to click change it. But when you upload an SVG, you don't change it here. You would change it on your canvas. So here's our cut image and we just click upload. And there it is right here. So it's the most recent one. So you select it and then you click add to canvas. And that's how you upload. It's, it's not difficult at all. Um, and this is our certificate. Let's zoom in a little bit here. So this is what we're gonna make. It's really very easy. All you're gonna do is personalize it with your name or whatever you wanna write, really. I'll give you some suggestions though. Now when you first upload an SVG, it will be, if it's more than one layer, and you can see this one is three layers over here, it will be grouped. So you want to ungroup it if you need to work with it, do any, any work with it, which we do. So we're gonna immediately ungroup it with the, um, either this ungroup icon up here at the top, or we can right click it and choose ungroup. All right, so now we have three separate layers. We have the blue, you are a star layer. We have the yellow um, back of the card layer. <laughs> and we have my signature, okay? Now notice they're all set to basic cut. This is normal, this is how the uh, files upload to Cricut Design Space. I am not able to change um, the, orient, the, the operation type to let's say write for you. I can't say this should upload as write. Everything will upload as basic cut when either I do it or you do it. So that's how it works. That is one of the um, advantages to using a Cricut access file or a file that someone has made in Design Space and shared is that you can change the operation type and save it and share it. And then others don't have to do as much prep work, but that is just the nature of how things are. So just so that you know and understand that. 
Um, but I always give very, or I, I try to give always very clear instructions as to what you should do when you prepare the files. So all you have to do really is to add some text and you're going to attach it and you're going to change it to a pen. <laughs> Remember everything that we're going to talk about is in on this page here. If you know, as you're following along, you're just not sure if you got everything right. This is everything that we're going to do. Okay. So we've uploaded the image. Um, we placed it onto our canvas and now if you need to resize it. It is currently the perfect size um, that, that will fit on all of the machines. But if for some reason, let's say you want to make it smaller or bigger, you can. However, to resize a multi-layer project like this, any project that might be layered like this, you want to select everything on your canvas. So select all and then resize as a group so that everything maintains the proportions of course make sure your lock icon is on too right so but you don't want to you wouldn't wait what you wouldn't want to do is resize this and then resize this one don't do that resize click click select all and resize everything and i'm going to undo what i just did all right now let's add some text remember to add text we click on the text icon over on the left we get our text box and we're going to just start typing text we're going to, you can type whatever you want. I'm going to type congratulations to Jennifer Maker for completing. And it's a little bit too big now. Let's zoom it out. And then I'm just pressing return on my keyboard, right? I mentioned that earlier, but just so I'm drawing your attention to it, to get to a new line, I'm pressing return. Oh, I might have moved out of there. There we go. Cricket kickoff. Okay. So that's all I did. I just typed it out. Um, remember you can get out of edit mode by clicking back onto the, the canvas and you'll see I'm, nothing is selected now. And if you need to fix a typo, I'm surprised I don't have a typo to fix. You just double click on it and then you can edit it again. Okay. All right. So it's too big for our card, right? No problem. We can resize it, right? So just drop, pick a corner, make sure your lock icon is closed. It really should be on by default, but click a, pick a corner and click and drag until it's about the right size and then click and drag it into position. It's just a little bit too big still there. That looks good. I'll let's zoom in a little bit more so we can see that really good. Okay. So we're getting there. By the way, um, I'm going to ask you to share a photo of your card. So you may not want to put your full name if you're not interested in sharing your full name. You could put your name and an initial, just your first name, your family name, whatever you want. All right. So uh, here is our text. Now, this is all great. However, remember, everything is set to basic cut, but I want you to use a pen to draw this. See, this is written with a pen. It's not, it's not, this part's cut, sure, but this part is written with a pen. One of the really cool features that all the crickets can do is use a pen to draw. So you need to change this from its default basic cut operation to a draw with a pen operation. So I showed you the operation menu earlier. You can use that again. You can just go up to operation with your text selected and choose draw. But notice what happened to the text. That does not look like what I have here. Like it's fine if you like this and want to make it like this, but notice how mine is a single stroke and it looks like a pen wrote it, not a pen made bubble letters <laughs> and outlined everything. So when you change something to pen, it doesn't fill it in. It's not a, this, a cricket. It's not a printer. It will literally draw around your shape, right? So if you don't like this look, you want to change your font. So let's talk about the font menu. Up here at the top, when text is selected, we get a whole new set of options, including the font menu. You just click this, it says font right here, and you just click on it to open it up. Oops, I think I clicked somewhere else. Okay, this is what the font menu looks like. By the way, you can click and drag it around on your screen if it's in your way. So let's move it over here. So it's not covering our text because it's really helpful to see your text as you're picking fonts. So the font menu is organized in um, with tabs across the top. By default, it'll open up to all the Cricut fonts, 
lots of fonts in Cricut. It's one of the best things about Cricut Access are all the fonts, but it, you also have access to your system fonts. System fonts are the fonts that are installed on your own computer, desktop or laptop, whatever. There's lots of free fonts out there. You can download them, install them on your computer, and then you can access them here. So I have apparently 305 system faults, fonts, and you can see them all here. And you can search for fonts, right? So the font I like to use for Jennifer Maker is called Pure. And if I search for it, this is it right here. It's nice, big, bold, easy to read font. This is what I use. You see it all the time and all of my if, you know, all of my stuff it uses this font which i purchased and we use it all the time this is not one it's not a free font and then the other tab here is bookmarked and any fonts that you've bookmarked will appear here so if you have favorites you can put them here and they'll show up here and then recently used fonts appear here so there's Cricut Sans, which is on our canvas right now and it tells us that it's on the canvas and then recently used is bfc Bloom Shine and Bitmap. So if you are you're like, oh, I just this font I just used the other day, it'll be here because you recently used it. But going back to the Cricut menu, uh, they really have a lot of fonts. You can search for them by font name, category, style, any language. You know, if you need a different language. And then over here is the filters icon. If you click this, it lets you filter by all sorts of things: all caps, current, multi-layer. That's more than I'm going to get into tonight, but I do want to call your attention to writing right here. So if we click this, it's only going to show us fonts that have a writing style available with them. And then if we click on free, we see only free writing fonts. So this is what I want you to do, unless you have Cricut Access already. And then that will show you at the time I'm doing this search, 21 fonts that are free and have a writing font with included. So for example, we could switch to this one called Rubber Ducky and it'll switch to this on the canvas and this is what Rubber Ducky looks like, right? So it'll show you, it's all a little bit big. We can resize that down. So this is now set to pen and it's in the writing style right here. There's actually even an italic. Right, so this is the style menu. So if you wanted to go back to the bold one, there you go. <laughs> and you can switch it back to cut if you want, but we're doing writing right now. So let's switch it back to writing, right? So you can do that. But let's go back um, to the font menu and I am just gonna choose Cricut Sans. It is a nice, simple font. I use it for all sorts of things. It's right here and it has a writing style which looks like this. And this is what I usually use when I make this certificate. So here it is. Again, we can see it's got the pen operation that's confirmed over here, draw, pen, same thing, in the layers panel. So this looks good to go. But um, what about my signature? So even though it's a signature, it's still set to basic cut because that's the default on upload. So we need to switch this over to draw as well. So it's really easy, you just select it, you go to the operation menu and you choose pen under draw. And now it is set to draw. So both of our layers that we want to draw, just like on this one right here, are now set to pen. So excellent. All right, so it might look like we're done. Do you think we're done? <laughs> It might, it really looks like we're done. We have our card, we have our text on it, we have our name, and then here's the front. There's nothing that you have to do for this front. This front. We're just personalizing the inside of the card. So this looks like it's done, but there's an important step that we missed. But let's just pretend that we forgot about it. And let's, let me show you what this is, because this is, it's really helpful to see. It's so helpful to make a mistake so you can see what could go wrong. So I'm going to go ahead and click make, which is the button you click when you're ready to, to make your project. So I'm going to click this and that leads us to our prepare screen. This is where all, it gives you a preview of what your mats are going to look like when you put them into your Cricut for making stuff or, you know, drawing, cutting, all that. So what we get are three mats, which is on, uh, doesn't make sense because after all, we just have two colors, all right? And the pen is supposed to be on the yellow card. So what's up? So as you can see, it has put the pen on its own mat and all jumbled up. Like this is totally is not the way that I designed it. This is on one mat. And then here is my inside of the card with no text on it. 
And then here's the front, and this one looks fine. So what went wrong here? I didn't attach it. I didn't tell Cricut Design Space where I actually wanted that pen to be. And so let's go back. We'll just click on the cancel button down here in the lower right corner. If we go back to us designing this, I'm like, of course, this is where we want it to be. We stuck it here. But this doesn't really, this isn't, this is just a visual representation of what we're designing, but we haven't given the instruction to Cricut Design Space to actually put that pen onto that layer. But it's really easy to fix, and you'll, and you'll do this for many things as you're combining um, operations. So anytime you combine an operation, um, foiling on faux leather, you know, so that's foiling and cutting. I saw when we were waiting for class to start, somebody asked about using the deboss tool and the pen tool at the same time. Two operations, right? Okay, so um, what you want to do is attach. So attaching will tell Cricut that you want your pen on your paper. So we just draw a box around all of the layers we want attached. So that's the yellow layer, the text layer at the top and the text layer at the bottom, right? So the three layers. So once we do that, we confirm, we've got all three layers here on the side and then we click attach. And then it all nests under the word attach. And now if we click on make, you will see that it is on our card just the way that it should be. So we are now good to go. So before we move on, I'm gonna click cancel and we're gonna save. I like to save before I start making things, um, just to like makes me feel secure and I want you also not to lose your projects. Um, so click on save, save frequently and often, and you can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it Cricut Kickoff Certificate by Jennifer Maker, and we'll save it to the cards menu right here. Now I'm a Cricut Access member, so I have more than five collections, Remember, if you have a free account, you get just five collections, right? So we don't have to even put it in a collection if you don't want to. It's completely optional. All right, and I click Save. And now it's saved, and Cricut Design Space confirms that it was saved, so yay. All right, so now we're going to click Make It. And this is the prepare screen. It looks great. You should have two layers, a yellow layer with pen. And you can see right here, it tells us what is going to, the operations that are going to happen on that mat. So we've got pen and we've got basic cut. It also lets us choose whether it's going to be on mat or on a card mat or without a mat, right? You're like, you could do this. You could, uh, this is the Cricut Maker 3. So we could put a piece of smart card stock in there and let it, let it cut that. I do not recommend smart card stock for this project though, um, but it is possible. Okay. But we're, no, we're going to put it on a mat. And then you can choose your material size if for, you know, you want it, like it matters. In this case, it doesn't really matter, but you can choose it sometimes. Like I say, you're using an eight and a half by 11 and you've got a whole bunch of something and you really want to keep it on the eight and a half by 11 then you would want to actually change it to eight and a half by 11 right here. But it doesn't really see how it changed on the mat. Um, but it, in this case, it doesn't matter for us. Um, like for example, I'll, I'll actually just show you. Let's say I wanted a bunch of copies. So up here, project copies, I'm going to make four copies and then click apply. So now I've got four copies, but I've only got eight and a half by 11 paper. Don't do this part. I'm just showing you. I've got eight and a half by 11 paper, which by the way, isn't even going to be big enough. So eight and a quarter by 10. So now it made two mats for my four projects, right? So that's good to know, right? So that if you ever are using a smaller piece of paper, you can get, you can force it to put your copies or whatever your design, you know, arrange them for you on those. Um, and that will allow me, having made these copies, will allow me to show you how to, um, you can actually do some things right here on the prepare screen. I can delete and hide these things, or I can really hide them. I can actually rotate them right here. If I need to like fit things into like, you know, cram them, trying to use all of my available space, right? You might be able to like rotate everything. Maybe I can get another one in here, right? I think I can get another one in here. So I can come back to this mat. I can click this little three dot icon in the upper left corner of it. After I've selected it, I can choose move object and I can move it to that other mat. 
and now I have three certificates on one page. <laughs> so that's really useful, but I don't actually want to cut all of these. So you can also hide them. So if you click those three dots, you can do hide selected. So let's just hide all of these things here. All right, there we go. So all of those are hid. The mat will still like appear here, but it won't cut the mat. So we've got our pen and basic cut mat and we have our, oh, we don't want all those either. Let's, let's hide all of those too. <laughs> we just need one of each. There we go. So just know that you, if you get to the screen and you want to make a bunch of something, you can use project copies to do that right here. All right, so we've got our pen on one layer. Ignore this one, this is just from our test. And our, you are a star on a second mat. So just two mats. You wanna have just two mats at this stage. Pen and, yellow with pen and basic cut and blue with basic cut. And uh, there are some other options you can mirror, but mirroring is not used typically for paper crafting. It's used for iron on vinyl mostly. So if you are going to if you are going to um, cut out an iron on vinyl project, then you want to mirror it. So I have tutorials on that if you want to learn how. So we don't need to mirror. All right, so let's click continue. When everything looks good, click continue. All right, and that takes you to the make screen. I have my Maker 3 connected via USB. We talked about USB versus Bluetooth in lesson one. I have USB because it'll be fast and reliable and that makes me happy. <laughs> All right, so on the make screen, you select your material and you also um, get instructions about how to load your mat into your Cricut or your, just load your material if you're using smart material, right? All right, so first, the base material. So what we're doing today, we want medium cardstock. If you don't see medium cardstock here, you can click on browse all materials and you can type it in. So just type in medium, press return and you'll get some options. Just choose medium cardstock. There's many options to choose from. You want to match your material to the material settings, of course. If you select it and decide it's not the right one, you can click it again and choose it again. Um, if you don't see anything about, you don't even see the browse all materials icon uh, link right here, you probably are using a Cricut Explore Air 2 or lower and you have a smart dial. So I can kind of show you what the smart dial looks like. I think you can see it, yes you can. This is the smart dial on the Cricut Explore Air 2. During lesson one, Cricut Design Space asked you to put it onto cardstock, but it needs to be on custom. I have already moved mine to custom because we moved it in lesson two. My recommendation is that you should move it to custom and leave it there. Don't ever move that smart dial ever again um, because if you've got it on custom, then that means you have access to all of these material settings that we use. And this is like where all the goodies are, right? This is, there's so many things that you can cut. I mean, look at this list. There's so many things and there's no way a dial could fit that. <laughs> so keep your smart dial, which only appears on the Cricut Explorer um, one and two, right? So just keep that set to custom. All right, so, but, so we've got medium cardstock, 80 pounds. That's, that's, whether you've got 65 or 80 pound, that's the right setting. And then for pressure, I like almost always change it to more. Not every time, but I usually do because I would rather err on the side of more pressure than less because in my experience, I found that more pressure results in a cleaner cut. So you do what works for you, but I love more pressure. So if you find that your cuts just really aren't as good as you want them to be, try more pressure. All right, so we've got more pressure. The other thing I want you to notice is this checkbox here that says, remember material settings. You wanna check it because we are doing these two mats here. They're both gonna be 65 to 80 pound cardstock. There's no difference between them, even though one of them will have um, pen on it right? It doesn't really matter. So you want to have the same material. And then it looks like I have to go back and do it again because I was messing with them. There we go, cardstock. All right, medium, uh, more pressure, and remember material settings.
So if we click that Remember Material Settings box, it's not going to prompt us for the material on every single mat. Okay, so it's, it's useful to know that it will do that if you, don't, if you don't check it, and that you may want it to prompt you for everyone, but you also may not. All right, so we, we're, all just, we're almost there. Step number two is load tools and material. So you want to load your black .4 pen into clamp A. So here's our Cricut Maker 3. We can finally get to use it. <laughs> All right, so we're going to put our pen in. Um, the Cricut Maker 3 does not come with a pen, but I got a pen. As I, remember, I told you all about the, that yesterday in lesson two, so you can get a pen for this as, if you want. I am using a fine point pen, I think. Um, yes, a point four tip fine point pen if it matters to you. A one point tip would also look great. Okay, so we need to put it into our clamp. And remember what I said, always make sure your pens work. So I am just gonna scribble here on my page. And yep, that's working, excellent. Okay, so we open up the clamp on clamp A, right? I can switch to a bigger view too, so you have a nice big view of that. Oh, that's a little bit low. Let me move it up a little bit more, there we go. All right, so I've opened up the clamp on clamp A. Our pen adapter is still in here. We were messing with it the, in lesson two, but it's in there. You want it to be in there if you're using the regular size pens. Don't forget that the Joy pens are differently sized than the Explore Maker and Venture pens too. All right, so I usually hold the bottom here and then I press and it snaps in. We close the clamp and we put our tip onto our pen so we don't lose the cap, all right? So that's good to go, and then we need to make sure our fine point blade is in, and it is in there. I always like to make sure, if I've been messing with it especially, that it's seated well in the clamp, and it is. If, if you're ever having an issue with it cutting, and it seems like it's not cutting correctly, check to make sure that your fine point blade is seated. All right, so now we need to put our material on our mat. Here is our, <clears throat> our mat is right here. I'm gonna put my keyboard away now. I think we're done with that. So just like I showed you, well, if you learned the Cricut Maker 3, we use smart materials, so you didn't see this. And your, your Maker 3 didn't come with a mat, so you'll have to get a mat for this. It could be the blue mat or the green mat. Either one is fine for this project. All right, so um, the mats come with the clear protective cover, right? So we're gonna remove that before we use it. This is a beautiful clean mat, look at that. Oh, I love it when they're clean. Okay, and new, they're so shiny, it's so pretty. All right, so we're gonna refer back to Cricut Design Space um, right here. Oops, that's not it, that's a totally different, that's a graphic from lesson two, okay. In Cricut Design Space, it's gonna tell us what our first layer is. You don't have to guess or assume what your color is. It says right here, it's gonna be the yellow one. If for some reason you wanted it to be the blue one, you could just click on the blue one and it'll cut the blue one first. But I like to stop at the, start at the top of the list, so I just go right down. And it'll, it'll automatically go to the next mat as you work. So our first mat is the yellow mat. And if you're ever not sure about placement, you can hover over it like this and it'll show it to you. All right, so here is our beautiful new green standard grip mat. And we're gonna put our cardstock. And this here is AC cardstock, really nice stuff. And we're just gonna smooth it down. You could and probably should use a brayer to really adhere it to your mat, but if you are new, you probably don't have a brayer yet, so that's okay. Just press on it really well and get it stuck well to the mat, okay? Don't worry, you're like, oh my gosh, it's gonna be so sticky, I'm not gonna get it off. Don't worry, it's gonna be okay. All right, we are just about ready. So Design Space says to load it. Right, let's go back and just make sure we're doing everything right. Always double check the screen. So it says to load the pen, we've done that. Load the fine point blade into clamp B. We've checked to make sure the blade is there. It will always tell, if for some reason you're doing something else, 
that requires a different blade and you're on a machine that has the ability to use other blades, it will tell you what blade to use. And then you load your mat and press the load and unload button. Okay, so to load the mat, you want to, so there, I'm gonna press against the end of the mat very lightly as I press the load and unload button right here. And that that is important because you really want your mat to be up against the rollers that you see right here. Those are gonna pull it in, okay? So, but I'm hold, pressing lightly here. This is something that I messed up when I was new. I didn't, I just stuck it in here. I'm like, oh, okay, let's just load it. And nothing happened because it wasn't up against the roller. So I press very lightly on the end of the mat and then I load it. Just like that. Now the Cricut makers, uh, the makers and the joy, joys and the ventures will all bring the material in and then and measure it to make sure that there's enough material before it cuts. Um, the Explore 3 does that too. The Explore Air 2 does not, just so you know. So that in case yours behaves differently. All right, so if you look at the Design Space screen now, it tells you that it's ready to go. So you're now on step three, it says press go. Speed automatically set for this material, press flash and go button. All right, so let's go ahead and cut it. We just press the flashing button. The flashing button is the one that it wants you to press. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're ever in doubt about what to press, go for the flashing one, but it's the middle button here of the three buttons. So I'm gonna press this, and it's gonna pull the mat in, and it's going to do the first operation that's listed, which is pen. So it's gonna write first, and then it'll cut second. You have a good view, we can see all that, yes. <laughs> I always like to look in there and make sure it's writing. It is. So um, the Cricut pen, or this Cricut in general, won't write the way we do where we would be like, congratulations to. It'll write in a different order. It's, I presume it's writing in the most efficient order, um, but it might be related to the font. I don't know. But So don't be surprised if it does some letters at first and not others. It doesn't mean that your Cricut is messing up or anything like that. It just does some and then it does them all. <coughs> Time for more tea. <laughs> and remember, um, I highly recommend for learning, well, first of all, if you wanna follow along with me, Watch the video, change the speed to the speed that works the best for you because you can slow it down. You can go really slow if you want. Um, you can also go faster if I'm going too slow for you. So you can change the speed on the video to match what is right for you. You can pause, you can rewind. Watching the video is, uh, you know, with the ability to pause, replay, slow things down or speed things up. I know people who like to do both is really, really a good way to learn. This is really better than if you were sitting right here next to me. I swear it is. <laughs> because it's, you know, you might ask me to repeat something twice. You might. But, you know, like you, you might not ask a third time, right? But with a video, you can have me say it 20 times if you want. You don't have to worry about it. It's always there whenever you are. I might not be up at 3 a.m., but you might be up at 3 a.m. wanting to make something, and you can just open up the video and play it. Honestly, video, learning through videos is one of the best things ever. Uh, Greg and I were just talking about it on the way in this morning because someone had asked about doing a cricket retreat like in person and I'm like, oh my gosh, it would be like chaos. <laughs> you know, everyone trying to use their machines at once and it would be noisy and people couldn't really, really truly understand the way that you can when you've got a video that you can rewind, rewatch, no matter at whatever speed you want. So just saying. All right, so it has finished. Looks like it's finished the writing. Now it's gonna cut. See, all the writing is on there, so now it's cutting it out. It's got four stars on it, and then I think it cuts all the way around it. 
There we go. Awesome. All right, so when it's done, your machine will tell you, um, your Cricut, sorry, Cricut Design Space will tell you. It tells you to unload the mat. It was giving me progress updates too, but I was too busy talking to you to say them, sorry. <laughs> I showed them in lesson one though, so. To unload it, we press the flashing button, right, right here, and you wanna hang on to it so it doesn't just fall onto the floor. And there is our cut design. Look at that, it did a great job. Okay, so to unload it from your mat, this is a brand new mat, it should be super sticky, right? So what you wanna do is, First, if you're new, you might be like, okay, well, I'm gonna just take it off, right? If you do it like this, it might rip, it might tear, it will probably definitely curl the cardstock. And I'm doing it like this to show you what can happen. So it actually came off really nicely, but it did curl the cardstock, right? Not too bad, it's actually fairly good, but I've seen much worse. But it is curled a little bit. The, Best way, however, to remove any material from your mat is to flip it over onto your work surface just like this, and then you peel the mat back from your paper. When you do that, it kind of just removes itself. You see how it's just coming off? But it allows you to keep your cardstock perfect, or whatever, whatever you're taking off, it keeps it perfectly flat. See, nothing curled or ripped or anything like that. So this is the way I want you to remove it from your mat too. Might have to poke out a little star, right? But there it is. Doesn't that look excellent? Isn't that beautiful? All right, our next layer then is just a cut layer. So we want to go back to our crickets right now, open up clamp A or, you know, whatever clamp you're using. If you have a joy, you only have one clamp and put away your pen. Put, that, put the cap on your pen so it doesn't dry out in your Cricut because you left it there. Because yes, I have done that before. All right, so on our mats, we have some stars. Use your scraper like I told you about yesterday and you just scrape them right off. You can sit here and try to pick them off, but they'll get under your fingernails and it doesn't feel good. And it's very time consuming and tedious. So just trust me on this, use a scraper. All right, next, next uh, layer is the blue. So pay attention to the orientation if your piece of paper is really small because it does cut the wide way, not the short way. So I'll put mine on my mat like this, just to be absolutely sure we have enough. You can, by the way, if you don't have a brayer, but you do have a scraper, you could actually use your scraper to push your paper onto your mat if you would like. So there we go, it's on there nice and, nice and good. All right, so we just go ahead and load our next mat in. Pressing it against the rollers, and then pressing our load button, and it loads in. It'll check to make sure there's enough, just like before. Now, it's just got a mat, so I mean, you can't really tell. <laughs> It's not like it, it, it knows for sure, so you can't really read the material on your mat. It's just what it does. And then once the play button, the go button starts flashing, we press it. There we go. And that layer will cut, and we're almost done. <sighs> and this won't take too long, it's just a cut, so. And um, let me show you the progress bar since I was too busy talking to show that before. So on the screen, you'll see it's um, showing you a progress. It's already at 100%, but notice it's not done cutting, right? So um, it's not done. What that, what that progress bar is, is from what I can tell, it's sending the instructions from design space to your Cricut. So it's not saying it's 100% done cutting or drawing or whatever. It's telling that it has sent 100% of the instructions to your Cricut, I think. I think that's what it is. Or the operations, I don't know. I'm just guessing. But that's from my observation, <laughs> that's what that is. So if you see this, don't think that your Cricut is broken. This is totally normal. And 
this is faster than the Explorer. Yes. So the Maker 3 is the second fastest Cricut. Uh, the Maker 3 and Explorer 3 are about the same speed. The Venture, which I would love to show you tonight, but we don't have a power, um, another power cord to bring in to show you. So that I saw someone asked about that, but you can see it in the background. Um, the Venture is the fastest. If you want to see how fast the Venture is, I have a video on just the Venture that shows you in real time how fast it cuts and draws. All right, so this is ready to go. We press that unload button. And here is our project. It did a great job. The Cricut really does a great job always. I'm always amazed and impressed by it, which is why I am here talking to you about it. <laughs> um, because I got a Cricut in 2017, not really thinking about, I just thought it was gonna be another tool, you know, another craft tool, and it just blew, blew my mind. Okay, so this layer is a little bit more intricate, so be more careful as you're you know, taking it off the mat. It's not bad or anything. Just, you know, be, don't, don't just rip it off or anything. You don't wanna rip off your nice, pretty words. And this is what it looks like. Isn't that lovely? All right, so let's still take off this one. I take it off the same way. And you are left with this cute little design. You could save the stars if you wanted but I'm just gonna scrape all of it off like this. There we go. <coughs> and make sure you get it all off. Move your paper out of your work area so it doesn't wander back in. And then be sure to put your cover back on your mat to protect it. Do it right away. Not later, just because you're busy, but right away, it makes a difference, I promise. Okay, so back in Cricut Design Space, this is what we see. It says it's done, and we can click done. Um, this project instructions box, someone recently showed up. If you click on this, it gives you some information about the projects. It tells you what was used so that save for offline, you know, set to private. So it's, there might be some information in here if this is like a Cricut community project or a Cricut access project, but not always, right? But just so you know, and you can of course click edit and add some details. So if you wanna leave notes for yourself, you could do that here. Um, and But otherwise just click done and it takes you back to your canvas, and apparently I'm being asked for a survey. Well, I think that, that my experience today was five stars, Cricut. You did a good job. I always wonder if they ever watch my videos. <laughs> all right, anyways, <clears throat> I have no idea if they do. I really don't know. Um, all right, so that's it. That's so nice and easy. Hopefully that was an easy introduction to some of the core um, feet functions of your Cricut. It's something beyond the test cut, but it's something you can do. And what I want you to do is I want you to, oh, I didn't tell you how to put together. I'm getting ahead of myself. I gotta tell you that part is really easy though, really easy. So um, I put the cover on the mat and then got distracted by the survey. <laughs> All right, so here are our finished pieces. Oops, there we go, right? So to assemble them, all you have to do is you flip this one over so it's mirror image, and then you just put the little corners into the corners of your certificate. No tape or glue is needed. You just put them in like this, and you have a cute little certificate or card, you can just make this for someone, put it into a lunch box or a gift, brighten someone's day. And what I want you to do is I want you to put it on either direction, but put it on your Cricut. Oops, that fell over, that's not good. Let's put it here. Put it on your Cricut and take a photo of it and share it with me in our Cricut Crafters and Makers group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. I would love to see your, your projects. It makes me feel really good to know that I helped you make something. 
totally 100% for real. I'm a little tired right now. It's true. You can, I can hear it in my voice. You can probably see it on me. So, but I genuinely care and I don't have to do this, right? This is not like a mandatory thing at all. I truly care about you being enabled to make things. Okay. So send, give me a photo. Make my night. I'll probably look, I might not look at them tonight. I might rest tonight, but I'll definitely look at them tomorrow or sometime this weekend. All right, so do this for me. Now, some of you, I, I have mentioned this before and I have done it in uh, previous Cricut kickoffs. So you see, I have all my Cricut sitting here. The Joy, the Joy Extra, the Original Maker, the Maker 3, the Cricut Explore Air, the Explore, the Explore 3. I even have the Adventure back here. The, like I said, it's not... It doesn't have its power cord. It's not attached to power because this is a lot of crickets, guys. <laughs> so we didn't attach that one, but all the others are currently on and they're currently connected to my Cricut design space. So what I would love to do is try or show you how, or at least we're gonna try. It's not like there's ever a guarantee. I wanna try cutting and writing cutting to them all at the same time. Would you like to see us try? It's not, there's no guarantee it'll work, um, but, but we have managed to do it in the past. So we're gonna add in another Cricut this year. So it'll be one more and we're gonna do it from um, my Mac. Yes, Crystal says please. Okay, it'll take me a little bit to set up, but I tried to do some advanced, advanced work. Okay, Cricut Joy Extra came out in the summer. We've got our yellow paper on it. We need our pen. So we'll have to switch this one because the Joy and the Joy Extra um, have just one clamp, so keep that in mind. So it can't be like a race or anything. Same for our Joy over here. We'll take out its blade also. Put in its pen, oops. Oh, I know that these work because I used them earlier today, but as always, remember that you should do a little scribble test. Okay, it's good. You know, because sometimes if they haven't been stored properly, they might not, the ink might not be flowing. Okay, all good. Okay, got our pens in. So I'm going to get all the pens in because the pen is the first layer, right? We need a pen over here. We know this pen works because we just used it. So put this in the slot. All right, and then this one needs a mat too. So let's put a mat on it. This is the, this is the part I look forward to because I'm always, I'm always amazed that we can do this. <laughs> always a little bit scared too, because you know, like, I don't know. I don't know what there is to be scared of. I guess I could fail, but so what? Who cares if I fail? At least I tried, right? Okay, got a big piece of yellow. It doesn't matter. It's in the right spot. So, Open up the maker, put in its pen, do its scribble test. That looks good. This is a blue pen, not a black pen, just because that's what I've got. Okay. There's three, four. The Cricut maker. We're gonna stand up to get up to this one. Uh, here's its pen. Let's check it. It's good. These are all fine points, but I'm sure that they would be fine if they were thicker. And the Explore 3, this is a gray pen. Okay, so all my pens are, the ink is flowing and ready to go. Okay. <clears throat> now we need to get them all loaded. So I have prepared the screen. So I told you earlier that you can create new windows for when you're in Cricut Design Space for desktop. So that's what I have done. So we're gonna go and make sure that we've got them all. This one that we just did, we'll send this one to the Maker 3 because that was selected already. So we'll go ahead and let me show you my screen. You'll see all the windows. All right, so we'll go ahead and send this one, get this one ready to go. And it's connected to the Maker 3, medium cardstock with more pressure. Okay, so I can load this one in. All right, Maker 3 is ready to go. All I'll have to do is press 
the flashing button when I'm ready. So I'm going to try to do it at, you know, a similar time. All right, next one is down here. This is the original maker. And this one should be ready to go also. And so you saw how that was in a different window. So I'm connected to different crickets right now. One window, I'm connected to the Maker 3, and another window, I'm connected to the Maker. I have this for all of them. Here's one for the Cricut Explore Air 2. And these, are, these windows are in my installation of Cricut Design Space for Desktop. You can do this for Mac or Windows. So if we go back here, this was the Maker. Here's the Explore 3. Here's the Explore Air 2 that I had just loaded. Um, and here is the Explore Air 3. <clears throat> and then we need to do our joys, right? So I have one here for joy. Here's the joy right here, medium cardstock with more pressure. And uh, right, and it does the pen first. So there we go. Now like the Joy Extra, it you don't have to press, so there's no buttons on the Joys. It just, uh, <clears throat> you just have to bring it in and it will grab it if it's ready to go. And then the Cricut Joy, I'm actually doing over on my iPad because I run out of, of sp <laughs> I run out of space for it, but it's ready to go too. I didn't want to leave it out. Okay, so we've got everything all loaded. Are you ready? <laughs> Are you ready for us to try? Look at this mess. Oh my gosh, we need to clean this up so we can have a nice shot of it. When we're doing it. There that better almost we've got a weird mouse sitting over here there we go that looks good so for this weird piece of blue paper okay so I can't click go all at the same time the joys will have a they deserve a handicap because I'm gonna to have to switch their pens out so I'll, I'll do the joy then the joy extra and then I will do oh is Greg gonna help me Oh yeah, come over here and help me. Greg's gonna come help me, thank you. You press the go button on these. Can you, you'll have to reach over here to get the middle button on these two. And I will do, you can do more if I'm busy. We'll try to do them about the same time. Here's Greg, thank you Greg. All right, so I am going to start, you ready? So I'm gonna press go on the joy and go on the joy extra and go on the Cricut Maker, go on the Cricut Maker 3. Did you do them all? Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Isn't this awesome? They're all cutting at the same time. And it worked. I always worry like something's gonna go wrong, but the Cricut Design Space is awesome. It truly is. The fact that it can do this this is a testament to the software. So good job, software engineers. I think you get a lot of flack, and, but the fact that we can do this is a really big deal. So way to go. So drawing, 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 drawing. I guess we'll see which one ends. These will have to be switched, right? Because the joys have just one clamp. And I'll keep an eye on them and we can switch them. Note that the joy is cutting it's turned 90 degrees because it's mat is smaller. Everything else seems to be cutting at the cutting well. I think it's so cool. <laughs> I only do this once a year because, you know, to get all the crickets out and get them all set up. Like Greg and I were scrambling all over, like getting all the things connected to do this. So, but once a year we, we get them out and we do it. Danny says, let's pop the champagne. I agree. That sounds awesome. <laughs> All right, so if you would like to see my screen, 
when my, my maker three doesn't even like show oh, that's because I switched it that's right I'm like why is it not showing let me show you what my screen looks like if you're curious here we go so you'll notice most of them say 100% um, so again 100% of the instructions have been sent but they're clearly not done uh, here is the maker still maker 3 is still writing everything is still writing right now um, the explore 3 is cutting the explore 3 Greg might have pressed it early yep. what why is the explore 3 faster than the maker 3 <laughs> It's still writing. Did I press it that much slower? I mean, it wasn't, I mean, whatever. So this is done. Oh, I have to fix these. Let's put their blades in. There we go. And then I need to press uh, go on them. On the, um, you know, right on the apps. There we go. Still going, still going, done, still going. The Maker 3 is finishing though. Maker 3 is done, Explore 3 is done. Explore Air 2 is done, Maker is done. Cricket Joy Extra is done, and the Cricket Joy is done. Wasn't that awesome? They had a little bit more to go. That was so cool. It worked. Good job, Cricut. So there we go. So for everyone who wonders, because I will often get this question, like, can you cut to more than one Cricut at a time? And yes, you can with the design space for desktop app. So we can unload all of these. And I'll show you my screen. That's the Joy Extra unloading. These all have you know, their normal unloads. I should just keep them in because where exactly what am I going to do with these? We're going to just keep them. We're just going to keep them in. One moment. Let me just load that again. I will need to remember to take my pens out though. <laughs> Otherwise, but you know, we will, we will clean up before we're done <laughs> for sure. All right. So, um, was that cool? Hey, Greg, can I get you to fix my notes again? Thank you. <clears throat> And I'm going to take a tea break again. Thank you for all the applause, everybody. <laughs> Other way. That's it. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. All right. So back in Cricut Design Space, um, we can see it's telling us all that, that we're done. If I, if I click this, and we're going to just leave it. We're, we're done. We've finished. But, you know, you can, you are not done, right? And while this does bring us to the end of Cricut Kickoff, it doesn't have to be the end of your learning, right? At all. I hope it won't be because I hope you're going to hang out with me and keep doing more. I do so many tutorials and I would love to have you along to play with me. Um, if you are eager to keep learning and really take full advantage of your Cricut, I have something else just for those of you who stayed to the end of class. Just this morning, I opened up enrollment for my very popular Cricut Design Space course called Cricut College Design to Shine. I'll put the link up on the page. Um, it is only open for public enrollment for just one week. Registration closes on Saturday, January 6th, and it's not going to open again until summer, maybe. Sometimes I go a full year before I open it, so there's no guarantees on when I open it next. I only open it once or twice a year so I can really focus on our new students and so my team can give them the support and help they need to learn their crickets really well. I know we have some Cricut Design Space students and alumni here in the chat. If you've taken Cricut Design Space or Design to Shine, <laughs> I'm a little bit tired, sorry. If you've taken Design to Shine, let us know in the chat. I'd love to see your faces. I mean, I've noticed many of you already here, but let us know, right? You can learn, if you are interested in doing Cricut College, it is a lot of fun. Um, it is a lot like Cricut Kickoff, but we go deeper 
into all of those those extra things what's print then cut like how does that work you know all of those things how do we make stickers how do we make 3d objects how do we do all of these things Cricut College is the place to do it at you can get details on it at jennifermaker.com slash design to shine. You can also just go to makeracademy.com. It will show you what that looks like so you're not confused by it when you go there. Here we go. So this is what it looks like if you go to design to shine. It's on a bunch of places, but um, this is my design space course. I've been teaching this for, it'll be almost four years this summer. And um, there's lots of information. Like if you're curious about it, read about it. I've got all of the details about all the cool things that we'll make in it. And of course, you, you may be wondering why you would want to enroll in something like this rather than my free tutorials, right? So this enrollment page will show you a lot of information about it. But there's also Cricut has, you know, Cricut Learn, which is free. Um, so the question is, why would you want to enroll in Cricut College Design to Shine rather than use Cricut's Learns Workshops, which are awesome. You should definitely do those. But the big reason to do something like Design to Shine is that I'm not a Cricut employee or a contractor or anything like that. I'm a Cricut fan. <laughs> and I can give you a completely unbiased approach to using your Cricut. I can tell you, I can tell you all the tips, hacks, and workarounds that you really need to succeed. Right, so I won't shy away from saying this isn't quite, this isn't right, do this instead. And I also don't push Cricut Access because it's typically required to use their images, right? In fact, you don't need Cricut Access at all for my course because I provide everything you need right inside of it. I also teach on all the platforms and I have a dedicated support team known as design counselors who make sure that every student is supported. Look at these awesome things Judy made. Um, so this is a big deal to us. This is why we don't have it open all the time. Now, when you're in there, you, continue, you get support all the time, but when we open it, we get lots of new students, right? But the biggest reason to do Design to Shine is that, in my opinion, is that it's a true program that builds upon itself logically in each unit, walking you through every important task step by step. Each thing I teach you is explained clearly in searchable videos and printable workbooks, not unlike the Cricut Kickoff Handbook. Right, so this is, a, Cricut Kickoff is, is really similar to Cricut College, except we go a lot deeper, and I teach you how to design right in Cricut Design Space. And everything I teach is reinforced over and over in a variety of ways to make sure you learn in the way that works best for you. I don't skip steps, I take you through slowly explaining everything as I go. You are fully supported through our Q&A center, behind the design videos, that's where I record myself designing things right in Cricut Design Space. Um, all the projects that you see on our page, in fact, let me just show you. Uh, which page is it? Here's one. All of these projects are made in Cricut Design Space. I actually show you how I design them too. So, and this is, I often hear this is the best part, is watching me, how, like how I, how, how did I do that? So that you can see exactly how it works. There's also cheat sheets, a private student group, and you can watch and rewatch whenever and wherever you want. And we help everyone regardless of whether you're on desktop or iOS or Android. So even if you have a desktop right now, but you get a uh, new iPad next year, you can revisit Design to Shine and learn how to use Design Space there too. This is a true program, one that's built really carefully. I, spent, I put a lot of time into it, making sure that it was um, thoughtful to really teach you how to independently make projects on your own without having to rely on Cricut Access, sorry Cricut, <laughs> or expensive SVGs from Etsy or following step-by-step -step tutorials, even from me, for the rest of your crafting life. But registration will close on January 6th, so you're going to want to enroll before then as I won't reopen it until maybe summer or maybe not until next year. You can enroll at jennifermaker.com slash design to shine or simply visit makeracademy.com.
And I have something just for those of you who have been doing Cricut Kickoff with me live. If you enroll in Cricut College right now, you'll get access to my Cricut Reference Guide Collection. There are a total of eight, yes, eight digital guides in this collection that are filled with tips and information that will help you Cricut faster, easier, and better. There's over 80 pages of Cricut Cheats, in fact. It is an awesome resource, if I say so myself, and like everything, we keep it up to date when there are changes. We went through and updated all of them. We were also updating all of our workbooks in Cricut College to make sure that it, they, we are showing you the most up-to-date changes, because Cricut Design Space changes a lot, as you might know. All right, so that's Cricut Design, or Cricut Design, <laughs> or Cricut College Design to Shine. If you're interested, I would love to see you in there. If not, it's totally okay too. No pressure. That's, that's how I work. All right, so you have questions and I have answers, so let me help you out. My team has been collecting questions for me, and I would love to help you. Okay, Let's see here, Pamela says, where do you find Calibrate now to calibrate the maker before using print and cut? So if you go to Cricut Design Space, let's go back there. Let's go to our nice little photo, our nice, nice our multiple angle one, because it's all nice and clean and neat. Okay, so here I am. We are all done. We've, we've uh, <laughs> I was afraid it was gonna fall on the floor. Okay, we're good. <laughs> all right, so, um, you go up to your profile up here, your account. You click on this, you go to settings, and you go to machines, and then you go to machine calibration. There's the Maker 3, you click on that, you click start, and then you choose which calibrate you want to do. That's how you do it. Okay, Lori says, I struggle with design space after cutting when it's more than just cut or print. Are instructions for projects always somewhere, or are you own on your, on your, are you on your own after cutting? I have hundreds of projects that have very specific details. Have you checked out my tutorials? They're free. You should totally do that because I love Cricut Access, I do. But no, they're not detailed in their instructions. With 600,000 images, I can see why that would be difficult. <laughs> I couldn't do that either. But I put out a new tutorial at least once a week, and my tutorials are very detailed that lead you from start to finish. Whether you're brand new or you have some experience, I tell you exactly how to cut, how to draw, how to foil, whatever it is that we're doing in my tutorials. So maybe you're not familiar with my projects there at jennifermaker.com. So I highly recommend you try those. Now, if you really want to make something from Cricut Design Space and you don't see instructions, then you can always ask in my Cricut group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. Uh, let us know what the project is and ask if anyone else has made it or if they have ideas and we would be happy to help you out. There are, in the, in, in the projects area of Cricut Design Space, they usually do list some basic instructions and some basic materials. It's not really in depth, but that might be an also a place to look for at least something. <laughs> uh, okay, Virginia says, how do you follow someone? Okay, so if you want to follow me, you can go to jennifermaker.com slash follow on Cricut. If you want to follow someone else, because I get it if you, you know, just don't want, don't want to follow me, I will show you what to do. So in Cricut Design Space, you go to back to home, and right up here it says search projects, fonts, and profiles. So let's search for Ashish Aurora. He is the CEO of Cricut. Let's see if we can find him. So images, projects, people. This is not him. There he is right here. So we click on his profile. There he is, he's awesome. Look at all his followers, look at all his awesome projects. This is his profile, and I mean, I'm pretty sure I'd followed him before, but I apparently had not, so I'm gonna follow him now. So this is how you follow someone, you just click that follow button, and then they're followed. So that's it, so you just search for them. So you may, it may be harder to find certain people, um, but you know, sometimes you can actually share your profile link with other people, just like I shared mine, with you, I'm trying to point to it. I'm not very successful. Here it is. 
<laughs> at jennifermaker.com slash follow dash me dash on dash cricket. That is the link that it just goes right to my profile. So that's how you do that. Okay. How do you copy from one design space window to another design space window? Great question. All right, so I'll have to show you in the big messy window. Here's the big messy window. Okay, so let's open up two windows and make it a little less messy. So here's one. Click on canvas. Let's open up another new window. Put them side by side. This is what I usually do on my monitor. I usually have two windows side by side like this and click on canvas. Okay, so let's say over here, let's go to my stuff. Let's get my awesome heart and stick it on my canvas. Okay, I made this heart many years ago. Oh, I don't want to make it. I just want it to go on my canvas. Customize. There we go. There's my heart. And let's say, you know, I don't know, I did some contouring and I change something about it, whatever. So it's, because if it's just in your images, what's the big deal, right? Let's say I modified it somehow and it was really important to me how I'd modified it. We're just gonna pretend, okay? So here it is. And let's say this over here is like a t-shirt project and I wanna copy it. So you can just copy it. So you can just do, um, I'll show you on my keyboard. I guess you can't see it, but I'm gonna copy Command C and then I'm gonna come over here doing Command V. Wait, did that work? Copy, paste. Right, so that's better. I can show you with the secret menu. So remember to get to that secret menu. It is just a right click. You could also go up here to edit, copy here, and then you go to your other window, and then you can just go to edit and paste. So there you go. That's how you move things from one project to another project in the Cricut Design Space for desktop. You can't do this in the, on the iPad or the Android. Uh, Virginia says, are the projects people save and share sized automatically? Usually, but um, you know, like it'll be sized the way that they sized it. May not be the right size for you, but yeah, usually those are sized. My files, pretty much, they upload at the correct size. There's been some periods where Design Space changed them, but right now, all is good, and they upload at the correct size. <laughs> we, we have some things that we do to make sure our files are very clean to make sure that they upload at the right size. Uh, Sonia says, can we save our designs as we do on Cricut on our desktop or laptop? No, you are not able to export out of Cricut Design Space. I think that some files, some low resolution files are saved somewhere on your computer, um, but they're low resolution. They're also like just pixelated images. They're not vector. So that's of no use to me personally. Um, if you make some amazing design here, like I say a print and then cut design, and you really, really want to use it, you can go into here. This will actually answer another question, in fact, while we're doing it. So that's good. Let's go back to the window. Okay, there's a sheesh. We're gonna to go to a new project. I'm gonna replace this one. Okay, um, let's say, let's paste our heart in here. Let's say you really, um, you did something, you designed something amazing and you really want to, I don't know, print it out somewhere else or whatever. You can turn off the grid like this. I just clicked up here. Oh, that's like a little trick, sorry. You can click in this little space between the rulers to turn your grid, um, to toggle it between big grid, little grid, and no grid. Okay, sorry, I should, have, I should have explained that, okay. But there you go, you can also go to your settings to turn your grid off. But you turn off your grid, and then you can take a screenshot of your, this is me taking a screenshot right now. You can take a screenshot of it. Right now, it's just an image it's not a vector design, so this may not really help you, but you know, if you did something cool and you wanna record it or save it because you're gonna print it out, you could do that. So that's one possibility for you. Lisa says, can I run Cricut with access from an external hard drive due to limited MacBook space? I don't know, actually. I don't know if that, I don't know if it needs to save its 
internal files, you know, its, pro, its application files. In, I know they go into the library uh, in your system folder. That's really an oversimplification. I, I suspect that you need to have, you need to have those, what did I say, two gigabytes, four gigabytes. It really needs that space. If your hard drive is that limited, you should probably find some way to remove files. And I realize that's easier said than done, but as a person who's used a computer for a really long time, I will tell you that if your hard disk is that full, you are probably experiencing extremely slow speeds right now. That's probably driving you nuts because with, with a hard drive that's full, you don't have any virtual memory for it to, it's like there's no room. It's like in a tiny little closet and it can't, and it takes forever to like to just turn around in it. So I don't think that it's going to help to put design, cricket. I, I could be wrong. I've never tried this, but I think that it'll struggle because it's really going to save its, those files, its caching files. It's going to save them onto your, um, onto your boot drive on your Mac. That is the one that's filled up. <laughs> I don't know if that was a good explanation. I tried. Lori says, do you find design space easier to work on a Mac or a PC? Well, I'm biased there because I've been using a Mac since 1988. So it's a really, that's like 20, 35 years now. So I prefer Mac. It's what I learned on. I mean, like I wasn't even 20 when I started using a Mac, right? So a really long time. And so I'm very comfortable on the Mac. Um, that said, that I don't think there's any true difference, really. I, I am comfortable on a Mac because I use a Mac. But the diff there's no, like no true differences other than that window that I showed you. Like big deal, who cares? It's not important. I don't for for um, the sake of argument. There's not going to be any real difference between the two. And the only reason I prefer a Mac is because I prefer a Mac in general. So if you're debating between the two, um, and you haven't really gotten used to a Windows computer or a Mac computer, honestly, a Windows computer is less money. So I would probably steer you in that direction. Debbie says, can you take a year's break from Cricut Access? Will your stuff stay there if you resubscribe within, with the same password and login? Yes, totally. You can cancel Cricut Access and all of your projects will stay right, saved right in there, no problem. And then, you know, a year later, if you want to start it back up again, you can, it'll all be there for you. It's not going anywhere. I've, I've got all my stuff going back years and years and years. So yeah, you can totally do that. Just know that while your Cricut Access subscription is paused, your projects won't go away. They're still all saved. They're right there for you. But if you wanted to cut them again, you would need to either purchase the fonts or images that were Access before, or you'd want to resubscribe to Access so that you're not charged. But you might not want to. You're taking a year's break, right? <laughs> uh, can you, Debbie says, can you briefly touch on X and Y access? Yes, all that is, here is our screen. Let's turn our grid back on because that's useful here. Um, X access is, and let's, here's the X, X, X and Y. So X is just your, on a horizontal plane. So as I'm, clicking this arrow button here, you see it's moving to the right as I increase the X. And if I decrease it with the little arrow button, I know my cursor is big so you can see it, but I'm now pr pressing on the small one and it's moving over to the left. Like literally X is just its position on the canvas horizontally. And um, y is the position vertically. That's all it is. And that's also the reason why you're not going to use it very much. It's just, it's, it's there if somehow you need to like get something like in some unusual spot. Honestly, the only time I've ever even touched this menu other than to answer a question like this was on my Android tablet when it was really buggy, which is, um, it's doing better now. <laughs> but like my, sometimes my designs, like I could not move them for the life of me. They were just like stuck or something. And like I would have had to like take everything apart to move it, like move it out of position. So then I use the X and Y axis. So if you're finding it difficult to move something and you don't want to take it out of position just to move it back in, 
you could use the X and Y to, you know, like literally, like if I say right now, if I change this to zero, zero, this should put it in the upper corner of my, of my uh, screen, which is exactly what it did, right? So it's up here in the upper corner. It is, I don't know why my scroll bar keeps disappearing. Maybe it's because this is a little bit, I've resized my screen a little unusual to get it to fit, but let's zoom out. There we go. It came back, but it's still, oh, so yeah, it's still not showing me. Let's, let's do this. Okay. There we go. I use my keyboard. Um, so here is zero, here's zero, and it put my heart at zero, zero. So that's like about the only thing that you might need to use it for some kind of something like that. You won't use it very often. It's there if you need it. It's good to know, right? Uh, Jose and Ho Ho Jose says, can you save the projects on the computer instead of my projects on Design Space? And no, you can't export from Cricut Design Space. If you need the functionality of being able to design outside of Cricut Design Space and create like files that you want to sell, you're gonna wanna use Inkscape or Illustrator. There's a couple others you can use too, Affinity Designer, but um, Inkscape is free, Illustrator is not free. I teach how to do both in my course called Cut Above. It is not open for enrollment right now though. Just like Cricut College, I only open it once or twice a year. I only opened it once last year. So, because um, I open it when it feels right. <laughs> Lori says, can you only edit the text on editable images? I think so. I think it's just the text, right? Um, you can't edit nodes and designs. Nodes would be the, like the way things are curved or designed um, in Cricut Design Space. If you need to get to that level, again, you'd wanna move towards something like a vector illustration program like Inkscape or Illustrator. Carmen says, why am I missing the hamburger menu? Because Cricut Design Space updated on you, that's why. <laughs> so. Here is Cricut Design Space. No hamburger menu. It's gone. It used to be up here, right? It used to be right here where I'm circling with my mouse. And then there was an update a couple months ago. And now that what was the hamburger menu is essentially right here. So wherever your account is, your name, it shows up over here and everything is under here. So. So it moved from the left to the right. It's no longer a hamburger menu. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, hamburger refers to the three lines that you'll see. It usually stands for settings. It's just like three little lines. I call it a hamburger menu because it's like the top bun, the meat and the bottom bun, three lines. Okay, so it just moved from the, essentially it moved from the left to the right and now it looks like this and it's got your name on it. Kathy says, why are mine grayed out? Why are slice, combine, et cetera, grayed out? So if you look right now, mine, oops, let's put this away. Mine are also grayed out right now. That's because I've only got one thing on my, my, uh, my uh, screen. I need to have at least two layers for those to work. So let's put a octagon on there and then select both of them. You need to have two layers selected. And that, or you could have more, but for slice, you need two layers. And look now, now you can see that slice and combine and attach and flatten are all there. So you probably just don't have enough layers selected for them to show up. It's possible you have something else selected, something an unusual layer, but that's probably what it is. Colette says, how do you turn the grid lines on or off on the canvas? I answered that one. You just click right here where the two rulers meet. This is the easiest way. Click right there and they turn off. Kathy says, is Jennifer connected to all the, am I, are you connected to all of the devices via Bluetooth, USB, or directly? Great question. Okay, so the joys can only work via Bluetooth. There is no USB, so these are both Bluetooth in my test, my connection test. These are all USB because USB is reliable and we have extension cords here because we use them all the time. So yeah, so the four, the two explorers and the two makers are USB and the two joys are Bluetooth. I mean, that would be the way it is. <coughs> Excuse me. 
All right. Um, and I think that brings us to the end. Can you believe this? Cricket kickoff this year. Six plus three plus three. Twelve videos. Twelve live videos in three days. That's a little bit insane. But look at all the ground we covered. We set up seven machines or six, six, six machines. We didn't set this one up live. I just showed it with this one, right? We did this one. We unboxed this one. We unboxed so many crickets and we, I'm hoping that this has been helpful to you. Let me know if you found this helpful. I do this once a year live and then our videos are shared all throughout the year for those who need to set up their crickets and get started and get started strong. That is my goal. My goal is to get you like rare, raring to go and there are so many awesome projects waiting for you. I have those of you who signed up for Cricket Kickoff will get an email tomorrow with projects for cricket beginners to get you started and going in the right direction. I have hundreds of tutorials and all of my tutorials are intended, almost all of them are for beginners because I love to help beginners because you're the ones that need my help, right? Um, the, the people who know what to do, they don't need me at all. <laughs> so almost everything I do is for beginners and we have so many projects and we have so many plans for the new year, all sorts of fun things to make and do and it's awesome. So I, I hope that I'm gonna see you in my, my tutorial premieres, right? We do a, a new tutorial every, every um in fact i'm going to show you a preview right now since we're at the end anyways um we're all very tired from merrymaker mingle and cricket college so there or cricket kickoff um so we're not going to do a project a video this sunday and also we have all of our cricket college students joining us so we need to conserve some of our energy for that. So there won't be a tutorial video this Saturday, this Sunday, which we usually have, but we still have a project for you. It is this. This is a perpetual calendar. Have you ever seen these? This is made in the Cricut. I'm gonna show it to you. Look at this awesome thing. I'm gonna clear out some space here. So, and it's for the new year. So this project will debut on our blog on uh, jennifermaker.com on Sunday, so in a few days. And it's a perpetual calendar, so you just rotate it. So what's today? December. I guess I should have gone the other way, huh? <laughs> today is December 28th. And look, look, at, look at how sturdy this is. This is not flimsy cardstock. We use craft board, and today is Thursday. Look at that, do you like it? Is this cool? You could make it yourself. And we used um, the pen and we used paper. You could also use vinyl to decorate it. And you can have a calendar. There's even a little stand that goes with it. I just don't have it out right now. Um, but this will be on our blog. And this is just one of hundreds of projects that we share freely. We love to see you make things. We, I don't, I don't sell my, my design files. I focus mostly on, of course, we need to support ourselves. And so we support ourselves through education, but we love to share our files. And so if you, and, but you know, like things like this, they'll just be a YouTube video. So if you can just watch it and make it. Will anyone make this? Isn't it cool? <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me, I'm coughing. All right. Okay, and there's one question. Okay, well, I'll wrap up and then I'll ask that question. Okay, answer that question. All right. So, uh, I think that brings us to the end of Cricket Kickoff. I have a big mess here. Let's straighten it up a little bit and wrap up. And I'll answer that last question because I know you've all got one more question for me. All right, so thank you so much for joining me for Cricket Kickoff. I hope you found this useful. Please come join our Cricket Crafters and Makers group, group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricket Crafters. It's an awesome group filled with nearly a million Cricket Crafters just like you. We would love to have you in there, get inspired, get motivated, show us what you're making, show us your certificate. It's the perfect place to post it. I'm hoping that tomorrow when I get up, I'm gonna see lots of certificate post photos. I really, I really, I will try to heart every single one of them. And then um, also don't forget about all of our tutorials coming out, as I mentioned. And one more thing, 
my book. I bet a lot of you already have it, but just in case you don't, this is the Cricut Coach Playbook. This shows you how to do all those things I touched on in our video step by step, and it has pages for desktop and pages for iPad and iPhone and pages for the Android. Um, it has there's a lot of people who have this book. Nearly half a million people already have it. So you might already have it, but if you don't, it is very useful for understanding uh, design space. You can get it from Amazon. It's called Cricut Coach Playbook. Or you can also just go to cricutcoach.com to get a digital copy. The digital copy can be downloaded over and over, and then you can just download an updated version whenever you want because Cricut Design Space does change often. So that is kind of as common. I see, I see, I see lots of kind comments about Cricut Coach Playbook. I, I, I have a see a question about if it's updated. We just updated it. We're updating it all the time. We just updated it at the end of November. It covers all the machines, from the Joy to the Joy Extra, to the Explorers, Makers, and the Venture. And that's because it doesn't really. It's not a big deal because they all use Cricut Design Space. And this book is about Cricut Design Space. But we still, whenever there's differences between them, we, we call them out in here. And so it is all up to date, all ready to go. The next question will be, how do you get your updated version if you've already got one? Because I know so many of you have one. You just go back to your email from when you originally got it. You click that download link again and download it. Um, if you can't find it, you can email us at hello at jennifermaker.com. Just be aware that we're all really busy <laughs> from doing cricket kickoffs, so please give us a little patience to reply back to you with your download link, okay? <laughs> it's been a, I mean, the holidays just happened, and now, you know, 12 live streams in three days. It's all, it's all very busy right now, so thank you in advance for your patience. All right, thank you all so much for joining me for cricket kickoff. I look forward to seeing all of your projects in the new year. And I look forward to seeing you in a recent tutorial video or whatever fun event we might have. Until next time, in our next video, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.